is a presentation of the iRacing Esports Network. For the final meeting of the Autumn Series. Chaz Draycott here with Tom Jacobs and Alex Simpson on the cameras tonight. And Tom, we've seen a lot of uh, really good action in the MX-5s over the last few weeks and hopefully tonight, with it being the finale, is going to be no different. Uh, no, I don't think it will be. Good evening, everyone. I hope you're all having a wonderful day and a nice evening. Um, but back to your question there, Chaz. Yeah, it's going to be, um, it's going to be an action-packed evening, isn't it? Really looking forward to it, as I'm sure you, all you guys are in the commentary box with me as well. So, um, some decent names out there tonight and it's it's going to be a feisty one they've got a, uh, a mixed bag in terms of racing conditions as well tonight we're starting the uh, the afternoon off well the evening off sorry in this setting that you can see now which is the afternoon setting it's pretty much like a midday sort of scenario the second race of the day will be done in a late afternoon setting as the sun is setting the third race we're going to be treated to a uh, an absolute wonderful race at the uh, well it's going to be set at night which is going to be great to see around Daytona. And then finally, we're going to revert back to the morning setting, so it'll give us a nice pretty finale. And there are your championship points. Jack McIntyre leading the way from Nick McCarran and Jason Cooper so far. Stelian Chepilevsky, Kip Stevens, Jamie Ayres, Steve Hefford and Luke Cooper and Peter Van Gool mean that it's just Momo and Swift Cooper Esports all the way up there, Tom. And I'll tell you what, it just shows the domination of those teams at the front. I mean, Youth Energy have been giving them a good run for their money as well, but... You've really got to give your hats off to them. And, of course, it's the last race meeting that we'll see the Momo team as Momo, of course, with the new regulations coming in due to logos. Yeah, it's a shame for them, isn't it? Um, but they've just dominated all year. Swift Cooper Esports and Momo, they've been to and fro. I remember the Interlagos race. It was just for you guys that watched that at home. It was absolutely fantastic. A couple of photo finishes in there. Um, I don't think tonight will be any different, but I really would, if I was those teams, be watching out for Youth Energy. They've, they've put in a lot of good work um in this series so far and they're, they're always ones that can throw a spanner in the work so to say yeah and i know they're going to be confident going into the final round as well um alex just to bring you in as well what are your thoughts on this evening do you reckon we're going to see uh, any sort of big upsets or is it going to be uh, normal proceedings um no i don't think we're going to see any upsets i mean i'm particularly interested in what's going on in the am championship because that is really close actually um and can switch around i think um Automate not kill doing a great job on that. Scott Malcolm, Benjamin Mears, one DNF for Malcolm. It's going to put him right under the pressure, so Mears could effectively get that. So, but yeah, I think um, as far as the teams go, obviously, yeah, Momo absolutely dominant this season. Deserve um, the praise that they're getting right now. Um, be interesting to see what happens when they uh, have a bit of a rebranding and they come back and things like that. So, um, yeah, it's just going to extend their lead in the overall year-long championship that we will. Um, perhaps uh, touch back in at the end of the uh, the race and see if we can't have a little look at Yeah, of course, these championships, they do run uh, four sort of smaller seasons. They have the spring, summer, autumn and winter series, and it all adds up to one massive year-long championship. It just divides it into smaller series, so you can have a few people winning different trophies and so on. I mean, to commit to it for a whole year is obviously a lot of work, and when you don't always get the results you want, it, it's, it can sometimes taint it a little bit for people, but you have to push hard, don't you? It's motorsport at the end of the day. And uh, it just gives people a chance to win a bit more silverware, I suppose. Uh, Tom, we know we know Daytona very well. Um, from what we saw last night, it was actually providing a lot of uh, good racing with the slipstream, but it's not really a track you'd normally uh, associate with an MX-5, is it? No. Um, for those of you guys that have done the 24-hour, Chaz and I have done that as well in GT3, um, which went quite well, actually, back in the day. But uh, no, it's... I wouldn't really put MX-5s here. We said this when we did the AM series as well at Monza. So it's going to be a very slipstreamy track, but the, the difference is here. You've got the two massive banked curves to take into consideration. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a bit of clear high and clear low, as the NASCAR boys would say. And, uh, yeah, but I think it could make for some decent racing, um, especially the infield section could be quite tricky. So the guys are going to have to have their wits about them. And if the track gets hotter, then obviously it could get a little bit more slippery out there for them. 
We've just got to really be careful as well, of course. For uh, we saw we saw a couple of guys last night not quite maintaining a perfectly straight line down the uh, the straights and the banking. It's not always the easiest thing to do, but a bit of contact here and there down those sorts of parts of the, uh, the track can just cause a massive, massive incident. And hopefully we won't see too much of that tonight. It's bound to happen at some point, but four races to come at you with then, and I'm sure it's going to be very, very enjoyable to watch. And we should be any second about to get a grid. It's about two, well, I mean, looking at the lap times, it's about two minutes, 10 seconds, I'd say, average in race pace. Uh, qualifying at the moment, fastest laps are 207.8, and that's Alex Cherney for Swift Cooper Esports. So really, really good lap, to be fair. I think last night we were getting about 209s, 210s. So that can obviously depend on the uh, the conditions. And any moment now then, Tom, uh, if you'd like to take us through the grid, that should pop up on screen momentarily. Yeah, so Alex Cherney takes your pole position with a 207.8. Josh Thompson behind him, who he should do well here. Pete Van Gaal behind him and Jack McIntyre round out the second row. Jason Cooper and Nick McLaren in fifth and sixth. Behind him, Luke Cooper for Swift Cooper Esports and Jamie Ayres in eighth. Ninth was George Simmons. Ryan Walker was in tenth. Emilio Largo was in eleventh. Twelfth was Jordan Giddings. Thirteenth was Ash uh, Jack Ashton. Sorry. Fourteenth, Pete Newman. Fifteenth, Steve Hefford. He'll be looking to make inroads there. Cesare Rizzo is in 16th, Mikey Key 17th, David Hampson 18th, 19th was David Ayres and 20th was Craig Jones. 21st, Adam McNally, 22, Mick Barry, 23rd, Adam Muse, uh, 24th was James McRitchie, 25th, Joe McDonald and 26th was Anthony Mott. 27th is uh, Carl Jacquelet, he should make some good inroads through the field and 28th was Jerome Ursum. Uh, 29th was Carl Hardy, 30th was Jordan McGlone. 31st was Scott Malcolm. We're looking to do well here. Brian Holmes, 32nd. 33rd was Craig Williams. Dan Hunt, 34th. Max Wright, 35th. And in 36th was Craig Evans. Finishing off then was 37th was Tyler Lugo Vickery. Kip Cooper in 38th. 39th is Nathan Davis. And rounding out your grid is Francis Romero in, in 40th. Smashing stuff. Thank you very much, Tom. First of the race, first race of the evening then, just about to come at you. They're going to do this from a standing start, which is very interesting to see on an oval. It's going to make for some slippery conditions as they slide down the banking. Green lights are on and they're away. You can see instantly the wheel spin, the rear end's just dropping down the hill. Thompson's second there, tries to defend from Van Gaal, but Van Gaal's got a really good launch and he goes down the inside into turn one. You can see all the plumes of smoke in the background. Jack McIntyre in fourth place as well, trying to pressurise these guys. And I mean, Tom, we've done a fair few amount of laps around here, as I'm sure most people have doing the Daytona 24-hour, but... That first corner can be an absolute nightmare to get right on the brakes, can't it? Yeah, um, it can. if you lock the rears up, it's the main problem going to there. You need to make sure the car's straight before you get on the anchors, because otherwise it is going round. But everyone seems to have got through pretty cleanly so far. Josh Thompson's maintained his position in second then, after not having the best start, and Alex Cherney leads the pack in the number 19 Swift Cooper Esports car. But um, everyone got a clean getaway there, Chaz, which is nice to see. As we just see one of the Swift Cooper Esports guys, Jason Cooper, going up into fourth position. A nice little move there up the inside. So, yeah, they're going to all start filtering themselves out and then a uh, bit of single file, I expect, and slipstream around the oval, Chaz. Yeah, this infield is going to be what separates the men from the boys, I suppose. We saw Steve Hefford last night in the AM race, obviously making the most of the slipstreams, but the amount of time he gained on the infield section was just amazing. Pete Van Gaal actually dropped down to fourth place there. He did obviously get overtaken by uh, by Cooper. He's got the place back now, but he went up to second and then back down to fourth. So he's not at the best of starts. Here is Steve Hefford in a battle with Ryan Walker. And, sorry, side by side with... Um, that's Oh, is it Largo there in front of him? It's Largo in front of him, sorry. Simmons just behind him. As they go flying into the wall to the bus stop. Largo in that bright green MX-5. Steve Hefford down the inside. We've got two of the eSports cars. Um, not the eSports, Youth Energy. Is that's Rizzo and Jones off. I believe that was Craig Jones. Anyway, number 37, it certainly was for result clothing. Oh, big bit of contact before that. Let's have a look what happens here. I think it might have happened in front of them. Yeah, the youth energy car gets into Rizzo. He comes back down the banking and before Craig knows that he's on his roof, or, or roll cage, let's say, there's no roof in these things, and nearly make contact again. A real shame for it to be over that quickly for Craig Jones. He was really on the pace last night. He was pushing that thing around quite a lot. You can see the youth energy cars making an absolute assault on the cars in front of them in the background. But this is... Uh, Largo, Simmons and Hefford side by side, three wide down the straight Hefford hugging that yellow line, hoping his wheels blend in as Cherney does the fastest lap of the race. Well, these boys are really giving it everything straight off the start here Tom, this is great Yeah, it's, great, it's a great battle isn't it, as I said they all get through turn one cleanly but it's about picking your line through there 
a lot of the guys going in, they're either two or three wide, um, which is what you don't want to be doing too often around here. But just look at that stream of MX-5s behind you. <laughs> it's, it's, like, sorry, it's like the M6. Um, but no, the Momo car's going well at the moment. Currently third, fourth, um, sixth, seventh and eighth. So those boys really are making up the front runners. But Alex Cherney doing well at the front. As you can see Largo now in that bright green car going around the outside of the kink on Simmons. It seems to make it stick. So yeah, they're all. it's been nice, clean racing so far, Chaz. And I think that's what we wanted from here. Um, I was a little bit concerned when I saw that we were at Daytona this week um, when I managed to get home from work. But um, yeah, I think it's, it's going to prove to be some nice racing around here. And that if the guys can keep it all together, it could make some great battles as well. Yeah, and obviously with the slipstream being such a massive part of this track, it really does level the playing field, as, as it often does in these cars. I think pretty much every broadcast we've done so far has said that, but... It was uh, it was Giddings in the uh, little carbon and blue machine. Our, our new teammate, Jordan Giddings, in the number 23 machine. As we see now, the battle for the lead, and Thompson has managed to get ahead of Cherney, but Cherney doesn't want to let that stick around like that. They're pretty much the same speed as they go into the bus stop. He breaks early, plays it safe. Jack McIntyre's around here somewhere. I think Jack's backed out of it as well. Just Again, they just want to uh, sort of not help each other as such, Tom, but they, they want to sort of just work together to make sure that they get away from the field behind and sort of just see who can get the best slipstream, I suppose. Yeah, of course they do. Um, it's, you see it in every single motorsport that the teams all work together. We saw it a lot with Vettel and Raikkonen in real life Formula One this season, um, working together the same as Bottas and Hamilton. So as you see, Cherney gets a fantastic run there on Thompson as he goes, takes the high line then over the start finish straight. And that just goes to show how strong this slipstream is, as we say every single time it is here. But, they, but I think they're going to go into turn one three wide got Thompson, Cherney and McIntyre there. So you've got the Momo boys and they all break late as they dive in now. But it seems that Cherney's come out on top and has got ahead of Thompson. So it's proving to be quite a fierce battle here as the, look at all the Momo boys really getting fighting in with all the uh, Swift Cooper Esports lads as well. And you've got Josh Thompson on his own in the privateer car. So he hasn't really got anyone to back him up here, Chaz. No, he's, uh, he's, he's going to be fighting this all on his own. But we know he's a very feisty racer. We've done a lot of driving with Josh recently on uh, a lot of practice sessions and things. And that boy can drive no matter what car you're putting in. And he's got a nice Mivano livery on it at the moment. He did join the uh, Thrust, uh, Thrustmaster Mivano team recently. So well done for that for Josh. He really does deserve it, to be fair, with the pace he's been putting in. He's really putting the pressure on Cherney. But as he said, it's just the Momo boys are just everywhere in this at the moment. But that train of cars behind isn't that spread out, to be fair. Jordan Giddings is into 11th, and that's just about where it finishes. As we see uh, Jamie Ayres there with Nick McCarron behind him. Oh, as Van Gould gets a little bit out of shape ahead of them. And then Heffer is going to try and get up to the back of this as well. And you've got to think, Tom, that this will uh, even bunch up more and more as the race goes on if these guys are still scrapping at the front. I mean, look at that. It's just another train all the way further down. And that's 14th place to look at right now. That's Pete Newman. So it goes all the way down to 17th, which is Mike and Key. And then he's got second to Craig Williams behind him. And even then, you're probably going to get a slipstream as well. Yeah, if you look at the timing screens, they're just lit up with zeros as uh, the gaps between the drivers. So, um, yeah, it, it's proven to be good racing here, which is what we said and what I've said before. But uh, Josh Thompson did quite well through the bus stop there. He's made a little bit of distance now. He's got about half a second on the guys behind him. And that's the sort of thing that he's going to need as we come into the big oval sections, um, because we know how strong a slipstream is. Just see one of the Swift Cooper Esports guys. That's Alex Cherney now down into third in the number 19 machine. And he's got the Momo boys coming up on him now. So Pete Van Gaal all over the back of the Swift Cooper Esports car. But Jason Cooper's not letting them go. And he takes the high line now. Goes round the outside of his teammate. And now they're three wide coming towards turn one. I'm not really sure what's going to happen here. They all go late on the brakes as they can. Josh Thompson gets squeezed out wide then. There's a Swift Cooper Esports car that looks to be Jason Cooper was the one that lost out in that, Chaz. But if we just see this gaggle of cars, you've got about nine, maybe even, what, 12 cars there all fighting for first position at the moment. Yeah, this is great scrapping and it's really nice and clean as well, to be fair. No sort of knocking and banging. They're all just giving each other the space. But what Jason Cooper tried to do was he ran really, really wide on the outside. As, oh, Hampson's off in the wall in the background. I think he's... Oh, there's Giddings as well. He's stuck in it. Not sure what's happened there whether Jordan's done that himself. But I saw Ryan Walker's name light up red on the outside. Let's have a quick look. Jordan goes into the hairpin. Then he's got... Uh, that's Jack Ashton in the 98 car behind him. Oh, Jordan just turns it in. I don't know what he's done. Oh, he's got it. He's just got it wrong in the exit. 
McNally goes into him. Hampson gets turned by Walker and Craig Williams gets in there as well. Real shame that something's broken on that car getting so because that went round very easily, didn't it? Yeah, it did. I think it was a little bit more than just a case of being too early on the power, um, which is unfortunate for him because he was having such a good run. But as we look back towards the front then, it is the Momo boys, one, two and three now. So it's all changed around. Obviously, the last time we came through here, Thompson had a half a second lead on the other guys. And now the Momo boys are fighting each other, coming towards the bus stop. You've got Jamie Ayres and Pete Van Gaal side by side, and they're bringing Jack McIntyre into it as well. And Jamie Ayres takes the lead then, going into the bus stop. So the Momo boys working really well together at the moment, Chaz. And that's what they need to try and maximise their points here, because they've been coming under a lot of threat from the Swift Cooper boys. And, of course, Josh Thompson as well. Yeah, doing a great job there. Jamie Ayres was about seventh only about a lap and a half ago, so now he's gone to the lead and now he's lost it again. Jack McIntyre going around him as well. Really, really good to see the lead swapping so many times and, of course, that's the nature that we get with ovals. Um, just revisiting very quickly turn one of the last lap, I was going to say uh, Cooper just went really far on the outside to try and get a cutback, but Thompson had to sort of straight line it on the brakes, so when he went to turn in, there was just nowhere for him to go, so he just had to straight line him himself. And that's why I lost so many places. But Josh Thompson on the outside now. Ayres on the inside. McIntyre in the middle. Van Gaal's going to be watching this as well. Look at Steve Hefford later on the break around the outside of Van Gaal. Josh Thompson around the outside takes the lead. What a manoeuvre. Great skill from Josh there to get it stopped. Get it around the outside and carry the momentum as well. And Steve Hefford is all over the back of Van Gaal as well. Oh, he's, well, he's not. He's on the grass now as Cherney is behind him as well. And uh, him and Jason Cooper are going to try and maximise the, uh, the opportunity there. But... That was brilliant by Josh Thompson. He just stuck it around the inside and see you in a bit, boys. I'm off. As yeah, old Jason Cooper bit of rally cross there, sorry. <laughs> no, it was a great move from Josh, um, and that's what we come to expect from him and most of the drivers that run in the top 10 of this series. But that was a brilliant move going into turn one. It was just amazing the turning speed that he had and how late he was on the brakes. And he knew exactly where he was going to position the car before he even got there. Um, which is what a lot of drivers don't have the ability to do. Um, so he knew exactly where the other drivers were and where he wanted the car to be. But he has lost out now to Jamie Ayres, who takes the lead then as they go back onto the oval section and uh, towards the bus stop. So it's Momo from uh, from Josh Thompson, Momo, Momo, Momo. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, it's, it's proven to be really fantastic racing here as we're on board with Josh Thompson and the slipstream proving oh so powerful again as they come up towards the bus stop. He's got the move done on Jack McIntyre now. So as we come towards the bus stop, McIntyre's going to be thinking he's got to defend defend here and try and take it around the inside. Josh Thompson late on the brakes again, going into the bus stop. Brilliant moving, brilliant manoeuvres there from all the guys, all staying out of trouble, and it's proven to be a fantastic race so far. I hope you're all enjoying the home as much as we all are here. Yeah, it certainly is really exciting to watch. Josh cut that bus stop quite a lot, though, on the exit there. I'm surprised he didn't get a slowdown for that. There was at least half of the car off the track, but... McIntyre once again making the most of that slipstream and we're seeing something really that Marco and I saw last night in the, uh, the Monday Cup where the further you are back when you're in the slipstream at least to, to get a run on someone obviously you've got more of an overspeed because the slipstream is affecting you for a longer period of time if these guys are coming on the oval and they're like Josh Thompson is now right on the boot lid of the car in front then you're not going to get much of a run on them so you've got to sort of be a bit tactical with it sometimes as Josh Thompson as he just taps the brakes out it's just a sea of red just floats towards the back of him and there's so many Momo cars in this battle, and the positions are changing constantly behind them as well. Hefford's now up to fourth, Cooper's fifth, Cherney's sixth, Van Gaal is down to seventh, McCarran eighth. As Ayres is down the inside of Thompson again, the number four car on the number 47 with 37 ahead of them. Jack McIntyre is going to be sort of pleading for Jamie Ayres to keep scrapping with him, but it's not going to uh, stop him getting the slipstream. But these sort of top, well, it's top 10 cars just putting on a really good show at the moment. And a big shout to Emilio Largo as well, he's the highest placed AM driver at the moment. And Cherney seems to have disappeared. Really not sure what's happened to Alex Cherney there. He's just dropped out. I'm not sure whether that's his internet, whether he's connect disconnected completely. But something has gone very wrong for Alex Cherney there, and that's going to be a real shame. He was having a fantastic race. But it seems like we've lost him completely, Tom. Yeah, it's just standard eye racing, isn't it? We've all been there. I know you've been there as well as I have, Charles. You're doing so well, and all of a sudden, dink, eye racing, and, uh, and your internet decide not to talk to each other. And uh, all of a sudden, everything disappears and you're in a wall. So, um, yeah, unfortunate, unfortunate for Alex Cherney there. But uh, that is that is the nature of the beast with iRacing, I suppose. See, Josh Thompson's got the inside line coming towards the bus stop now. But he's coming under pressure from Steve Hefford and, uh, and Jamie Ayres with Jack McIntyre out in front still. Jamie Ayres looks like he's going to go for the lead. 
takes it up the inside going into there and uh, the number 72 car there Steve Hefford read the road really well placed the car it seems just to let his teammates not come under too much pressure coming out of the bus stop uh, by Josh Thompson there Chaz so um, good manoeuvre from him and great defensive driving yeah he's got everything really in terms of the uh, the actual sort of skills that are involved in this I mean anyone can drive a car and slipstream off someone and go past them but it's all about what they do on the infield and through the bus stop. Steve Hefford now through the middle of his two team. Makes beautiful uh, flying in formation there. He saw Thompson dab the brakes. He doesn't want to go four wide. We've seen what happens when that uh, comes to fruition. But he's pushing Steve Hefford through the middle of his teammates now, saying, come on, son, I want to get through this as well. Ayres is on the inside. McIntyre on the outside. Ayres then dives in front of Thompson, gets it on the brakes. Beautiful car control to get it turned in that well. And now Steve Hefford is in the lead of the race, and Steve's having a fantastic drive so far. He's actually gained 14 places to take the lead. Craig Evans has the biggest uh, amount of positions gained down in 14th place. He gained 22. And Dan Hunt, the car in front of him, is 21 as Thompson is wide there on the exit. And Jason Cooper is taking advantage of that. But, yeah, like I say, must give a uh, big shout-out to Craig Evans. He's doing fantastically at the moment. Dan Hunt has equaled him for positions now. I've, uh, I've looked back at the screen. He's up to 12. So we see... Uh, a lot of skill all the way through. You can just see at the top of your screen there as well, the blue and green strips. Oh, was Lager really late on the brakes? Slide down the inside of Angle and clips Thompson nearly. I apologise for saying they clipped him. He didn't, of course. But you can see at the top of your screen there, um, just quickly, that the pro drivers are designated by the blue strips that you can see on the time of the screen. Oh, was Largo and Thompson make contact. Largo went round the outside on the brakes and it just wasn't working for him. And then the contact naturally turned him around. And just like uh, Largo's car, the bright green does designate the AM drivers, as you can see on the left. And you can see their best lap times per class at the very top. As in the blink of an eye, Jamie Ayres has taken the lead back from Steve Hefford now because of the slipstream. And he's back to the front with McIntyre and Jason Cooper behind them, Tom. And there's just, there's just no rest for these boys. I mean, we've only got 30, uh, 25 seconds of the race to go, actually. So this might already be the last lap as Hefford nearly comes over on McIntyre there. And into the bus stop for one more time. Yeah, so this might be a photo finish, mightn't it? Um, I think this might be the last lap, to be honest with you, Chaz. Uh, we've got 10 seconds to go before the last. Oh, Thompson, Thompson gets massively out of shape, coming out the bus stop and hits the wall, and he will be kicking himself in that car. He was saying to us before this race a couple of days ago that it just seems to be that when the pressure gets to him right at the end of races, and that's what happens. So he'll be really upset with that. But anyway, we come towards the end then, and it's Jack McIntyre and Jamie Ayres, the two Momo boys, coming towards the start-finish straight. Jack McIntyre begins to take the lead as they tip it in, but Jamie Ayres has got the inside line, but it looks like McIntyre just gets it by a nose. So, fantastic racing from those guys, Chaz, and it was all clean. Unfortunate for Josh Thompson, but there's always the other two races that we're going to do this evening. Um, so, yeah, what brilliant racing. Nice and clean from everybody, and just really, really great to watch. Yeah, as we see McDonald there just over the line, taking it from Anthony Mott. You just saw Luke Cooper is there as well there, beating Dan Hunt to the line by a hundredth of a second. As Mick Barry seems to have got the run on Craig Williams there, but Craig's going to have the inside line. Look at him going down underneath the yellow. That's not going to help you that much though, Craig. And Mick Barry takes 23rd place off him. But it was a Momo 1, 2, 3, 4 in that race. And just as we were saying off the top of the broadcast that these guys have been so dominant, they go and do it once again. And hopefully Jamie Ayers and Jack McIntyre might do a... Uh, a little drifting performance for us. I know that Jack's been uh, a big fan of that. Jamie, let's give it a go anyway. There's Jack trying to get the rear end out. And this is the uh, this is what we love about when Momo win races. They can just drift this car around willy-nilly. It's just mental. But, um, yeah, like you say, really, really good race, that. Feisty all the way through. There you go. Go on, Jamie. Go on. Oh, it's gone around on him. Never mind. <laughs> Jack's showing him how it's done with Steve on the exit as well. But that's the fun of it. You've got to have the fun with it as well. And... Those guys will be loving that. We just saw Simmons as well, actually. George Simmons made it up to fifth place at the end of that race. And uh, he just went below the yellow line and just said, no, nah, I'm going to go down here now and take this. But he did come back up. So I'm not. Uh, if it was in a straight line, I'm not entirely sure whether it was that much of an issue because he's not technically cutting a corner. But we'll leave that up to them to decide. But there's your race winner, Jack McIntyre. Always quick in this car. And he's always up near the front of the field. He gained three places to win that. But Steve Hefford, highest places gained in the top 10. He gained 12 places. And Emilio Largo as well. Really good result for him winning the AM class. And uh, Tom, if you'd like to do the honours with the results, mate. Yeah, so a well-deserved win from Jack McIntyre. Uh, the four Momo boys taking first, second, third and fourth with Jamie Ayres, Steve Hefford and Pete Van Gaal all behind Jack McIntyre. So a great race from them. 
George Simmons in fifth with Jason Cooper in sixth. Uh, Nick McCarron in seventh. A good drive from him. Pete Newman in eighth. Jack Ashton in ninth. Emilio Largo was your AM winner. What a great drive he had in tenth. Luke Cooper in eleventh with Dan Hunt in twelfth. Uh, James McRitchie was thirteenth with Craig Evans in fourteenth and Benjamin Muse in fifteenth. Uh, 16th was Josh Thompson really unfortunate for him at the end but I'm sure he'll come back fighting 17th was Ryan Walker and 18th was Max Wright Joe McDonald in 19th 20th was Anthony Mott Scott Malcolm in 21st with Tyler Lugo Vickery in 22nd he had a great drive didn't he uh, Mick Barry 23rd with Craig Williams in 24th uh, David Ayres in 25th with Jerome uh, uh, sorry Jerome Ursum in 26th Jordan McGlone in 27th and Brian Holmes in 28th Jordan Gillings in 29th with Alex Cherney in 30th. Uh, rounding off your grid at the end was Adam McNally, Mikey Key, David Hampson, Carl Hardy, Carl Jacquelet, Cesare Rizzo, uh, Craig Jones, Kip Cooper, uh, 39th, Nathan Davis, and 40th was Francis Castillo Romero. Cracking stuff. Thank you very much, Tom. And for the first time from three times this evening, we will bring Mr. Alex Simpson in to do the reverse wheel. I'm sure he's very excited to do this. Everyone always is. It's a fantastic thing to do. Alex, are you there? Oh, I'm in. Good times. And uh, if you'd like to uh, do the honours, please, mate. We've got quite a few people eligible for the reverse grid. There's not actually that many cars that were just one lap down. Uh, Jordan Giddings was one of them, though. And obviously, as a new teammate of ours, we'll be hoping for that 29th. But I think it's pretty much all even numbers, isn't it? So let's hope... Uh, <laughs> Let's hope he gets uh, No, there's some odds. There's some odds. But uh, yeah, so closest he's going to get is 30th, I think. So, yeah. Um, right. Let's give it a spin. See what we get. <laughs> 30th might be coming into play, you know. 45th at the minute. Is it going to make 30th? I don't think it is. It's close, but it stays on 45th. Well, even so, to be fair. That is obviously a full reverse grid for everyone to lap down. So that does mean that, well, me and Tom are going to be very happy about this. It's Jordan Giddings and Brian Holmes on the front row from Jordan McGlone, your own Ersum, and David Ayres, who will line up fifth. So we'll let the guys get ready for the second race of the evening. Obviously, we're going to be in the late afternoon setting as well. So wait till you see this beautiful sunset lighting. And I will join you with Tom Jacobs and Alex Simpson back on the iRacing Esports Network in about 10 minutes time. Don't go away.
Welcome back to the iRacing Esports Network and the Daytona International Speedway for the second race tonight in the BSR MX5 Autumn Cup. I'm Chas Raycott with Tom Jacobs alongside me in the commentary box and Alex Simpson on the cameras. Having a brilliant evening as always on Tuesday night. It's the final round of the season. Um, we were just saying between the, uh, between the two races, Tom, that first race was brilliant and hopefully we'll get more of the same. Yeah, I really hope we do. Um, the Momo Swift boys were really just fighting tooth and nail, weren't they? And you had Josh Thompson up there as well with them, so you had a bit of privateer thrown in. The AM guys are all fighting hard with each other, so to be honest with you, I think it's going to be hard to top that for race two, um, but I know that the guys will give it a really good go. Yeah, they, uh, they won't hang about, and typically, after what I was saying before about having some uh, lovely sunset lighting, you can clearly see that's not the case before us right now. We've got very overcast conditions in the second race. It's almost like the weather heard me. But um, it's going to be a bit cooler for them this time around, and I'm not really sure whether tyre degradation will be an issue over these smaller races, but it might mean that there's a bit more grip out there, and these guys can uh, probably chuck it around a bit more. So on the infield, it might get a little bit more spicy. Not that it wasn't spicy in the first race, to be fair. We were seeing a lot of moves. And uh, there again, you see your championship standings. Jack McIntyre, your race one winner, was well, just well away with it. Him and Jamie Ayres crossed the line pretty much side by side, and... Uh, well, I'm pretty sure the Momo boys will be back up there again pretty soon, Tom, but we're happy because the front row involves two of our drivers, really. I mean, they're driving for other teams here, but of course they uh, have recently signed for us, and yeah, nice to see them both up there, I suppose. Yeah, it is, isn't it? So uh, good luck to them and good luck to everyone else on the grid as well. Um, it's it's going to be a real feisty one, to be honest, I think. it's There's a lot of guys down there that are going to have to fight through the field to get their way through but um, if we see the clean racing that we did last time it's just going to be fantastic isn't it so really looking forward to this one and I hope you guys are at home as well someone in the chat called Marco Barbonero is saying he's jealous of you Alex being able to roll the wheel why wouldn't he <laughs> so, <laughs> surely he did it surely he did it on Monday night was he what was he want does he want to do it all week well, we, we don't we don't get um, we don't get to roll it on Monday nights it's, oh uh, do you not oh he was well, gutted up I even Where's... told him that we were going to do it, and he didn't. <laughs> Where's my violin? Hold on, I've got a small one around here somewhere. <laughs> I'm sure he'll look. I, I, he doesn't even get to do it on the ILMS um, series either, in Le Mans oh. series, does he? Oh, poor lad. Oh, poor Mark. We'll have to just give it... He'll just, I'm sure he'll just do it a few times on his own anyway. He'll, he'll be <laughs> all right. <laughs> but um, as it stands at the moment, then, we're just coming up to the end of warm-up now. Uh, literally, as I say that, all the cars disappear on track. Off track, sorry. And they will start lining up on the grid. So my uh, lovely colleague, Mr. Jacobs, will take you through our second grid of the evening. Yes. So Jordan Giddens and Brian Holmes round out the uh, the front row with Jordan McGlone behind them. Your own Ursum in fourth, fifth, David Ayres, sixth, Craig Williams. Seventh was Mick Barry, Tyler Lugo Vickery in eighth. Ninth, Scott Malcolm with Anthony Mott rounding out your top ten. Joe McDonald in eleventh and Max Wright in twelfth. Ryan Walker, 13th. Josh Thompson, 14th. He'll be fighting for the field. Ben Benjamin Muse in 15th. 16th, Craig Evans. 17th, James McRitchie. 18th, Dan Hunt. 19th, Luke Cooper. And Emilio Largo rounds out your top 20. Cracking stuff. Thank you very much. As we see, Jordan Giddings, our pole sitter for this one. He's going to be very nervous, excited, and scared, and everything. There's millions of emotions go through you when you're on pole position, especially with a uh, bunch of feisty Kears behind you. Not Kears, Mazdas. Get it right, Charles couple of guys waiting to grid up at the moment then and we shall be on our way for the second mad second bit of madness of the evening although two cars don't seem to have gridded up there the lights are coming on and for the second time tonight the lights are green and they're away plumes of smoke everywhere people sliding all over the place Brian, Brian Holmes nearly goes into the wall but look at that from Craig Williams he's all the way up into it well I say all the way up he's up to fourth place already got a great getaway as they go down to turn one then it's Giddings from Holmes and then uh, Jordan McGlone is there in third we saw a good run from him actually yesterday night so he's hoping for some better results this evening as well but once again Tom nice clean start for everyone it seems which uh, I don't think it's very surprising to say that uh, we're surprised about that actually yeah we normally get a few incidents don't we uh, we see Craig Williams taking third place off Jordan McGlone um, so we had a brilliant start uh, right at the front there he went from sixth to third already so a good start from Craig but yeah, it's, it's nice to see, actually, and it, it brings better racing. I know sometimes a lot of people do like the incidents, but altogether, it's been nice nice and chilled out so far, and it's a miracle they all got through turn one as they did, but they did, and uh, yeah, we're well away. The t everyone's starting to spread out, everyone's got a lot of respect for each other, and I think we could have another cracking race on our hands. 
sure we certainly will. And obviously the faster guys will start coming through the field. That's the beauty of the reverse grids. Jordan, Gidding, Jordan Giddings, if I can say his name right, he won't be happy about that. Leads the way from Brian Holmes then. Brian is absolutely rapid in this MX-5. We've seen him win multiple races this season, but Craig Williams is not hanging about in this one. And he's going to be closing right up to the back of Jordan now. He's got the slipstream off the pair of them. And maybe going up to the outside might not be the best idea. Here. He's just wanting, wants to really push Brian past Jordan here just so he can try and get it done in the bus stop. Let's see what happens. Brian is clear of Jordan now. Craig's still alongside. Craig gets on the brakes early. Nice and wise bit of driving there. Still side by side with Giddings, though. Giddings really giving everything through the bus stop, but Holmes has gained a massive lead because of that. Those two compromise their lines. But uh, you've got to think now, though, Tom, they're going to have a massive overspeed when they catch up. But look at the gap behind back to uh, McGlone. There's oh, RP Van Gogh is flying down the order after a really good race one. Nick, Nick McCarran's down the order as well. Craig Evans and Max Wright have also dropped down, so I'm not sure what's happened to those guys as there's a result clothing car sort of train there. And even further down the midfield, Tom, there's still battles everywhere we look. Yeah, there's battles all over, isn't there? If you look back at uh, Mr. Simmons there, George Simmons, he's fighting with Benjamin Muse and uh, James Ritchie as well. So all these guys with uh, Joe McDonald thrown in there as well for a bit more spice as they come into turn one. This isn't anywhere where you want to be doing any major heroics, but they're all through cleanly as well, Chaz. The result clothing boys, um, they've been going quite well in the AM Championship um, and having some really good results as well. So. As you see the stream of cars come through into the infield section then, you see Josh Thompson, he's moved up into seventh place. He's moved seven places already. We're only on lap two here. So we, it's got to be said, Chaz, a lot of people have got it all to lose, but they're not actually losing it here. We haven't had any, I don't think there's been any incidents apart from the guys that you just mentioned. Um, so it's, it's creating some brilliant racing. As you oh. see up ahead, Craig Williams going on uh, going on to uh, Jordan Giddings there. And I think he got the move done. But it was right at the edge of your screens and uh, look at the gap he's got already but i've got to say brian holmes is pulling out a tremendous lead here so far yeah i think there was a little bit of contact between uh, craig and jordan let's have a look then as they go through the kink oh jordan just squeezing him out a little bit and then i think craig's just going to stick it down the inside for safekeeping he does oh it's, yeah just to be fair it's only a little bit of contact runs it late on the brakes it was just very fierce racing they're just giving each other the minimum amount of room possible and they were both lucky to carry on I was just having a quick look then as well at um, you're speaking about people gaining places in one lap Jack, Jack McIntyre has gained 13 now 14 places George Simmons gained 12 so here is Jack in the middle of it all with Scott Malcolm and George Simmons in front of him side by side into the bus stop you can see him taking it nice and safe Look at the run he's got on Scott Malcolm there. Really nice exit, but he's going to be on the outside and he's going to hope that George Simmons stays up high so he can get some slipstream off him. Giving Scott the minimum amount of room once again. At the end of the day, that's all he needs to give him. Scott just needs to make sure he doesn't wash out wide, but look at that. Look at the slipstream. You can see Scott in the mirror just sliding away from him. This is going to be full throttle all the way down to turn one. It's all about trying to get the smoothest run down there as we go on to the third lap of the race. Brian Holmes has a one and a half second lead. And if he carries that on, he might have just about get out of the slipstream, to be fair. Craig Williams behind him then with Jordan Giddings behind him. You see the number 22 car there slamming on the brakes. That was the car of James McRitchie. It's just a really big scrap there behind. Uh, that's Dan Hunt and Tyler Lugo Vickery heading this group. It's a really big scrap going on all the way down. As always, see McGlone there down the inside of Thompson. Thompson trying to get the move done around the outside. Seems to have got it done. His next target is going to be Anthony Martin. That's eight places gained for Josh there. Tommy's doing a smashing job once again. Yeah, he is, isn't he? Um, so it's, it's all good from him. He's, he's been fighting hard through the field. Uh, I think the way he got, where he went off at the end of race one, as you see a lot of guys behind the youth energy guys really breaking hard. Ryan Walker there um, trying to keep on the back. But Josh Thompson, he'll, be, uh, he'll have that fighting spirit in him now. He doesn't want it to end the same way that it did in the last race. So he's just picking off the AM guys now, but it looks to be that the top three, Brian Holmes, Craig Williams and Jordan Giddings, might have a little bit of a gap too long for him here, although Jordan Giddings is still well well within um, slipstream range of David Ayres, so that could all come down to it. But here we go then, Thompson's right up the back bumper of Anthony Mott now as they come into the bus stop. He takes the high line coming out of the slipstream, so we'll have the run here. It looks like he's going to try and turn it round the round the outside, and which means he'll have the inside line coming into the bus, coming out of the bus stop. Sorry, 
late on the brakes, darts over the nose of the race data systems car and through he goes. So now he's going to go and chase down David Ayres. And uh, he still could be in tent contention for the win here, Chaz, as Craig Williams has actually taken the lead from Brian Holmes now. So um, I don't know whether Brian made a bit of a mistake because he had a fantastic lead at one point. But these guys are now going to be fighting each other uh, quite hard, I think, for the rest of the race, Chaz. Yeah, I think, to be fair, you probably get a slipstream just about from about one and a half seconds back. So with Brian being that far in front, as you see there, out, out with the bus stop as well, actually. Craig seems to just get the better run, so Brian's just let him go around the outside because he's thought he's going to get the slipstream either way, but yeah, it must have been a little mistake through the bus stop that caused that for Brian. It's a real shame, but he's still in a fight for the lead, of course. Jordan Giddings not too far back either now, but David Ayres is leading the uh, the AM category at the moment. Once again, you can see those green little, uh, green little strips on the left-hand side next to the driver's positions and their names. That designates that they are what is known as an AM driver. Pro drivers are in blue. They do fight for separate championships, and obviously there is the overall championship as well. And the little flash of red that you might have seen on the timing tower there indicates that a car has gone off track or got what we call an incident point, where they just put about 50% of the car or two wheels off the track at one time or even make contact with someone. So this, uh, this timing software really, really does react very, very quickly to what we've got. It's perfect for what we need. We are very grateful for it. It's fantastic stuff. And of course, we are hopeful that, uh, that it makes your viewing experience even better as well back at home. And a viewing experience right now, it's not going to be so great. It's Craig Williams looking at his rear view mirror because he's going to be filled with Brian Holmes and he's going to see Jordan Giddings creeping up as well. And now we're onto the banking again, Tom. You've got to think these guys, especially Jordan Giddings, might get a hell of a run here because he's only 1.1 seconds back. Yeah, he is, isn't he? And he's kept himself together and he's been watching these guys in the front and he might be even wait, waiting for a little bit of a mistake. And you've got to say, what a great camera shot that is. As they make contact, Brian Holmes does bump it, bump Craig Williams up the straight. But I think that Brian Holmes is going to bide his time for the overtake, maybe until the last lap. Because I think going into the final uh, section of this, of this course, a fantastic track that is Daytona, um, you want to be behind so that you can get the run towards the line. You don't want to be coming out the bus stop in first place. So Brian Holmes goes for the bump again, and he does. Um, yeah, you want to be behind so that then you can go and take the lead coming across the line. And that's how we've had so many fantastic photo finishes towards the end of these races, Jazz. David Ayres has dropped off. David Ayres has gone. He was leading the AM category, and you might have just seen him flash off the timing screen on the left. Anthony Mott is showing us in the pit lane for a second there, so he must have been uh, down on the yellow lines. There he is passing Ryan Walker using the slipstream, but real shame for David Ayres to be out of this one. Not sure whether it was a, uh, a disconnection or whether he might have got disqualified or something. But we've had a couple of uh, Benjamin Mears disconnected from the race as well, unfortunately. So he's actually been in the fight for the AM Championship as well, so that's a uh, big hit for him. And he actually won the Dynamics uh, Sim Race as well. GT and Championship as well recently so he's going to be hoping if he can get into the last two races of the night to make that two AM Championships within a week of each other as we look at Tyler Lugo Vickery in the thick of it had a good race in the uh, the first one did Tyler he's had a bit of rotten luck recently with incidents and that didn't uh, that didn't stop on Monday night either as he's side by side with Steve Hefford then through the kick Steve down the inside surely going to get it done on the brakes he's already ahead to be fair Tyler will just let that go he knows how quick Steve is see behind them there as well James McRitchie they are now actually second and third in the AM category are Tyler and uh, James so they're going to be fighting tooth and nail for that they've got some of the pro guys behind them as well one of the youth energy cars I believe that's Jack Ashton uh, sorry it's McNally is behind Largo they're all having a good ding dong as well but if you look at the gaps of the lead as well there's really nothing in it between uh, Williams and Holmes as there's another battle there Mott leading the way in the AM category he's got Ryan Walker and Jack McIntyre your race one winner behind him they're going three wide here, Tom. This is going to get sketchy down to the bus stop. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Oh, uh, oh there's a little bit of contact there as well. And McIntyre, rightfully so, does back out of that. He got squeezed quite hard there, didn't he? Um, but it just goes to show, Chaz. I mean, naturally, obviously, as you see in most of the races, um, even in real life and in eye racing, we will, we will focus um, on the front runners. But it just goes to show that down in the midfield, you can get some fantastic racing as well. And the, the battles that these guys have, I mean, a lot of people think that this is just, you know, just a game and things like that. But it, there's a lot of practice and effort that goes into it. And it really does show in this series how hard these guys do work. As we see now, Mr. Walker leads them in fifth place now. But they're going to might go three wide. You've got McIntyre there. We know how quick he is. He's your race one winner, as Chas said. And uh, you've got Anthony Mott in the race data systems car. 
They're going to go three wide into turn one then. This could end in tears or they could all go through nicely. As we see there, Ryan Walker backs out and rightfully so. That was the best move that he could have done there. They're all through safely and Anthony Mock, Chaz, is having a brilliant defensive drive here. He's got pro drivers galore behind him, weaving this way and that way to try and get past and he's just defending really well. So a great drive from Anthony Mott there and um, yeah, it's just, just keep going lad, you, you're doing fantastically well. Yeah, he just needs to keep it on the island and not get overly defensive with these pro boys because otherwise that'll cost him an am win. Very annoyed at himself for that. Brian Holmes now. Josh Thompson, Jordan Giddings are in this fight as well. All chasing down Craig Williams. Josh, uh, sorry, Jordan repeating the move that Craig put on him a few laps ago. <laughs> That's a bit of redemption for Giddings. I don't think he meant to run out that wide. But they're three wide now going onto the left-hander before the oval. Josh Thompson gets out of that rightly so. Craig Williams down the inside. <laughs> Nearly makes contact with Jordan. They don't want to get too feisty here because these guys are high up the order than, uh, than we've seen them before. Jordan made his, uh, his debut on a Roval actually in this series at Charlotte and he really did impress back then as well but someone that isn't impressed is uh, Craig Williams the two of them now carrying pretty much identical damage to their cars because of the uh, the points of which they made contact but Craig flies around the outside scares Jordan a bit by pushing him down now look at Josh Thompson down the inside three wide then Craig's going to be laughing his head off looking at that rearview mirror and nervous at the same time Josh late on the brakes, Craig turns it in, Josh is on the inside, Jordan's in the middle, Jordan's on the grass, nearly makes contact with Josh, and Josh makes it work somehow, fantastic driving once again, look at McIntyre, what an exit he's had, but he's going to run out of slipstream now if these guys are single file, so that might not work for him, but someone it might work for Tom is uh, Anthony Mott, who could gain even more places here. Yeah, he could, couldn't he? And all these guys are fighting for the win. I know Craig Williams has got a little bit of a gap uh, to the guys behind him now, but he's still well within slipstream range. As we can see, Josh Thompson tucked right underneath him now, letting that clean air pass over the car, and it's, it's making him gain places. So it's just all switchy, switchy, argy-bargy here at Daytona, and it's making for some brilliant races as we come onto the last lap then. Going into turn one, Josh Thompson's got the inside line. Brian Holmes tries to take it as well. The car stepped out a little bit, just a whisker, and that's brought Jordan Giddings back into play as well. But he's got McIntyre and Anthony Mott behind him as well. So Anthony Mott, the AM driver in a sea of blue pro drivers, and really holding his own here as Jordan Giddings tries to go around the outside of Brian Holmes. And this is really shaping up to be a fantastic end of the race, Jazz. Yeah, great stuff there. Brian Holmes is down the inside and then switched to the outside on Josh Thompson. I've just got to say as well, Jack McIntyre and Anthony Mott having a good scrap there as well. Anthony making the places, of course. But Jack so far has gained 24 positions in this race. He's just, once again, showing that he's the absolute class of the field with gaining places. I mean, me and Alex were watching him at, uh, at Charlotte Roval, as I mentioned a moment ago. And he, he was like, I think he gained 18 places on the first lap or something ridiculous. He was absolutely flying that night. I think he won two races and he was on the podium 4-4. Four four. So uh, he's just showing us once again that Rovals are, well, not that it is a speciality, of course, but uh, he can he can do it anywhere. He can do it absolutely anywhere in this car, can Jack McIntyre, as we see Brian Holmes now around the outside of Josh Thompson, keeping his foot in. He's got a really nice run. Craig Williams is uh, starting to get make a bit of a gap, but of course that's going to come down. Look at the difference in speed there that these guys have got now. Should be in front of Brian Holmes' car. There it is. Josh is on the brakes a bit early. Just got to keep it clean in here now. Josh just gets a really smooth run through there. Look at that. He knows that he's going to get slipstream, so he doesn't have to go completely banzai through the uh, bus stop. And he's, he's actually quite far back here, so we're going to see Josh in the lead by turn one. I'll tell you that. Let's have a look. Yeah, we're coming to the end of the race, aren't we, as well? This is I was about to say, it is the final it is, lap. Yeah, it is the final lap, yeah, so this is going to work in Josh's lap. So Josh Thompson, he held back, he knew what he needed to do. They're going to go free wide. Brian Holmes goes defensive. Josh Thompson got, takes really takes the high line. There's only a nose in it. Brian Holmes now is really fighting hard, but Josh Thompson's got it from a front bumper as they come towards the start finish, and Josh Thompson takes it by uh, seven thousandths of a second there towards the end of the race he knew what he had to do Looking oh. back a bit we've got Anthony Mott there seems to be spinning down the pit lane as I think that was Jordan Giddings as well spinning spinning as well but my god Chaz what a finish um, that was brilliant. brilliant that was amazing I was that excited that I completely forgot it was the last lap but what a brilliant move by Josh there like I say he just knew what he needed to do he hung back in the bus stop made sure he got a good run as oh there's Brian Holmes getting turned just after the line Hopefully it was after the line anyway. Obviously the uh, we saw the contact there with Largo, but 
Mac it was Ash. Again. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, apologies. Yeah, I I'm trying to see, I'm trying, I heard the massive slide. I was trying to figure out who it was that had the big old slide. I'm not really sure. What? I think it was Giddings and Mott that came together. I'm not sure whether it was caused by contact, whether one of them tried to go under the yellow lines or something. But sometimes if you do do that, and you dip under those yellow lines, obviously, suddenly the surface flattens out and it does affect the uh, the balance of the car. And you can actually wheel spin it quite a lot if you do that, especially in something like the MX-5. If you're running a lot of camber as well, and it'll just spit the car to the right and off you go. But that was a really, really good move at the end by Josh Thompson there. And he's uh, pulled out a really good win. Craig Williams will be happy with third place. And, of course, Brian Holmes in second and Jordan Giddings in fifth. They're really good results for those guys. Anthony Mott. Takes a very dominating win in the uh, the AM class. You can see that on the left-hand side. He finished sixth. And the next AM driver down was Emilio Largo in 16th with Tyler Lugo Vickery in uh, 17th. So really, really commanding drive there by Anthony Martin. It was good to see him mixing it with the big boys, actually. Jack McIntyre on that shot then. Fantastic view of him drifting through the bus stop. I'm sure he's going to be uh, giving it everything for the rest of the lap. But that was, uh, yeah, fantastic to watch, Tom. We saw a lot of different sort of drivers all having one big ding-dong all the way through. Yeah, we did, didn't we? Um, and I said that uh, it would be hard to top race one. Well, they managed to do it, and it was all on the last lap, wasn't it? Mainly all the uh, all the great excitement. So, um, yeah, brilliant driving from the guys. I really can't fault them this evening. We've seen um, we see a lot of incidents in MX-5 racing, obviously all the way from rookies up to the, the, the top of the line MX-5 stuff on official and in leagues as well. They do provide some incidents. But this evening, it's been, been quite calm for them. So, um, yeah, well done to Josh as well. He, he, I think he needed that. Um, he's, he was quite disappointed after race one. So, yeah, looking forward to race three, I've got to say it. We're just waiting for Max to finish so that we can bring the official standings up. Everything's still provisional at this point until he gets to the line. Some of the guys there doing burnouts did, as well. <laughs> it's, worth, it's worth pointing out, Max did get hit when the guys were coming through uh, on their cooldown laps. So. But, uh, yeah, anytime, Max. Come on, mate. Gas pedal's on the right. <laughs> Someone went off in the background there doing donuts. I believe it may have been Jamie Yes. He just put it in the wall in the background. So he's going to be looking for a Mazda dealership nearby to repair the front end of that. There is Max right then. Just finishing the uh, finishing the race. Fair play to him. We've seen Max actually get the car in uh, terrible condition across the line a couple of times. So there he goes doing it again. And uh, Tom, if you'd like to do the honours with the results, mate. Yeah, so Josh Thompson is your race two winner. Uh, the six thousandths of a second in the end from Brian Holmes. Craig Williams comes home in third. Sterling joy from him. Jack McIntyre in fourth. He had uh, moved 25 places from the start, which is just brilliant driving. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. Uh, Jordan Giddings in fifth with Anthony Mott in sixth. Luke Cooper in seventh. Steve Hefford, another Sterling drive in eighth. Jason Cooper in ninth with Dan Hunt in tenth. George Simmons in 11th with Ryan Walker in 12th. Jamie Ayres in 13th. I'm sure he'll be coming back in race three. Adam McNally in 14th with Jack Ashton behind him in 15th. Emilio Largo in 16th with Tyler Lugo Vickery in 18th. 19th was Alex Cherney. And then 20th was uh, Cesare Rizzo. Uh, 21st was Jordan McGlone. Um, he fell back a little bit, didn't he, at the end? Uh, Scott Malcolm was in 22nd. 23rd was Craig Evans. 24th was Carl Jacolette. Um, Carl Hardy was in 25th uh, Pete Van Gaal 26th with Mikey Key behind him Nick McCarran in 28th and then in 29th you had sorry your own Ursum and then rounding out for the rest of your finishers was uh, Max Wright David Ayres David Hampson Joe McDonald Mick Barry Pete Newman and Benjamin Mius Thank you very much Tom and oh there's Craig Jones as well let's not forget Craig um, really really good race that fantastic fun once again and someone who's about to have fantastic fun is Alex Simpson. He gets to roll the uh, the spinny wheel once again. Hello again. Straight into it. Just to get a pole. It'll be a full minus four. And it is going to be a full minus four. There's no way it's making it around. Full minus well, four. It, it would have been max right if it was a full. But if we go back one, two, three, four places... We're going to be looking at Peter Van Gaal on pole position for Momo. He fell off early in that race, so he'll be happy with that. He's then got the result clothing car of Carl Hardy behind him. And Carl Jacolette, Craig Evans and Scott Malcolm will round out the top five. So we'll let the guys go and get ready for the third race of the evening. And it's going to be a night race as well. So these liveries are really going to pop under the, uh, the lights of Daytona. And of course, it'll be a much cooler track as well. So join me, Tom and Alex back on the iRacing Esports Network in about 10-15 minutes time. 
Don't go away.
Welcome back to the iRacing Esports Network and the Daytona International Speedway. I'm Chaz Draycott with Tom Jacobs and Alex Simpson alongside me tonight for the third out of four races in the BSR MX-5 Cup. And we're just lining up on the grid now, so uh, Tom, we're going to need you to uh, fly through it when it comes up on screen. Here we go. Yeah, so Pete, Gang Pete Van Gogh is on pole. Next to him is Carl Hardy. Carl Jacolet in third. Fourth is Craig Evans. Scott Malcolm in fifth. Cesar Rizzo in 6th, Alex Cherney in 7th, James McRitchie in 8th, 9th Tyler Lugo Vickery, 10th Emilio Largo, 11th Jack Ashton, 12th is Adam McNally, Jamie Ayres is in 13th, 14th is Ryan Walker, 15th George Simmons, 16th Dan Hurt, 17th Jason Cooper, Steve Heffern in 18th, 19th Luke Cooper and Anthony Mott rounds out your top 20 before the start. Thank you very much Tom, the lights will be coming on any second. And we're all set to go for the night race this evening. Fourth place on the grid hasn't lined up. That's Craig Evans. He's got a pit lane start, unfortunately. The lights are out. Away they go. Oh, it's a really, really poor start from Carl Hardy. He didn't get off the line very well at all. Carl Jacolette immediately capitalising on that. Behind him is Cesare Rizzo and Scott Malcolm side by side for fourth and fifth. All the headlights are ablaze. But look at Van Gogh out in front all on his own at the moment. Three wide there. Rizzo trying to go around the outside of Hardy. They've made contact. Rizzo's around. Hopefully he doesn't come back across the track and the big one has happened at Daytona, they could say. Carl Hardy in, oh, there's more cars in the wall. Rizzo in the wall again. And there's Ryan Walker we see in the pit lane. Oh, this is really not what we wanted, boys. That's a real shame, that is. Cesare Rizzo involved in two accidents there. Not quite sure what happened when he came back on. Craig Williams is there. Craig Evans coming out of the pits. He's going to be laughing all the way to the bank after that. But we've lost quite a lot of guys in that one. I mean, there was at least uh, eight cars involved. McRitchie, Rizzo, Williams, Walker, Hunt, Hardy, Evans and Cherney as well in there. Jamie Ayres affected by it. He's down 13 places. Not sure whether that's just because he avoided the accident, but it's, uh, well, it's how we've seen it all season, really, at the front. George Simmons is actually leading the way now. He's gained 14 places in that. Peter Van Gogh is second. And then you've got uh, Carl Jekyll and Adam McNally. So it's Momo Small, Youth Energy. Um, sorry, George Simmons is not in the lead. I really apologise. He's gone back to the pits, I think. So what's happened is, because he's jumped out to the pits, it's counting him as ahead of everybody in the race. So it is Van Gogh leading the way from Jacolette McNally. And Tyler Lugo Vickery's up there as well, so he's going to hope to stay there. But real shame to see that, Tom. That's, uh, it's not really what we've seen in the first two races, and it's a shame that that's happened. Yeah, a bit of a shame, isn't it? Um, there's a lot of guys. It's, it looked like they could have easily avoided incident there and just ran into people um this reminds me of a certain jordan driver at spa 2004 just ran into the back of, back of someone just for the sake of it um but i'm sure they don't do it for the sake of it but it's unfortunate to see that but uh david hampson actually just want to give him a quick shout out he's up 17 places out of that chaz uh, which is which is really good actually um so coming out of uh, lap one he's up 17 places from the start but here we see then Carl Jacolette Pete and uh, Pete Van Gogh. And they are fighting it out at the moment. 
And you've got Adam McNally in there for Youth Energy. There's a couple of Youth Energy boys up there, actually. Tiger Lugo Vickery and Jack Ashton in there as well. So that's your top six. Uh, Scott Malcolm is in eighth place. So all the boys coming now into turn one. As we see the fight for second position. And Jackalette looks like he might have it done up the inside. So, yeah, unfortunately the start there, Chaz. But um, I'm sure we'll get some great racing delivered to us uh, so for, for the rest of the race. Yeah, hopefully so. Um, it's, it's spread it out a little bit, but you can see now that this gap, even just this fight between uh, Jackalette and McNally, has got Tyler Lugo Vickery in there as well. He's close right up. Behind them is Emilio Largo, and then you've got Jack Ashton, McIntyre, Malcolm Cooper. Hampson is red on the timing screen on the left, and he's going flying down the order. Jamie Ayres has just lost a place to Benjamin Mears as well. Not quite sure what's happened to Hampson there, so hopefully he can uh, get back on it. Not sure whether he's done that himself. Do. See whether he can. Uh, he's got it stuck down around the outside. There is uh, is Jack McIntyre. Down the inside of him is Jack Ashton. All he can see right now, Jack McIntyre, is just bright green in front of him. He's got Lugo Vickery's green Youth Energy car, and he's got Emilio Largo's green Privateer car, and then the top half, of course, of uh, Jack Ashton's car is green as well. Just gradually making a bit of time back there, Tom. But this could get feisty into the uh, to the bus stop. Yeah, it will do, won't it? See uh, the number one, two, four there, just touching the wall very slightly. Uh, so that will have hampered him a little bit. And, uh, the Youth Energy boys really in the fight at the moment. There's a lot of guys that like green out there as well, don't they? So uh, apologies sometimes if we um, get the names wrong. Uh, they all do look quite similar sometimes. We're on board with McIntyre now. He's going around the outside of Lugo Vickery. He's taken the high line, um, but he's out of the slipstream now. So if we look in front, Lugo Vickery has got Jack Ashton, who's going to be tucked in behind. But Ashton has gone, taken the high line towards the start finish straight. And that's going to work in the favour of McIntyre now. And McIntyre is going to be looking to maybe make the, uh, the double race win here this evening. Could do it. There's a lot of guys uh, in front of him that are very quick, though. But we do know how quick McIntyre is himself. So he's just got to keep it nice and clean as we go into lap three of this race. And uh, I don't know about you, Chaz, but these races do go very quickly for us. I mean, they're on lap three already and pretty much at the, uh, the half point point already now. Yeah, they do fly by, but that's the beautiful nature of them, really. They are sprint races, so they are frantic, and it certainly makes for exciting racing as we see McIntyre once again side by side with Ashton. Now they've got a great scrap in front of them then between Largo and Jackalette. This is for the lead in Amp. Bit of contact, bit of kissing wing mirrors down towards the kink probably only get away with that in the likes of the MX-5 or maybe the Kia which is here on Thursday night for the final round of the BSRTC Pro Series a year-long championship so that's going to be a real dramatic evening and look at Jackalette now he's just trying to find any space he can to get back past Emilio Largo and they're gradually holding up the uh, beautiful flying formation of Jack Ashton and Jack McIntyre at the moment Ashton a little bit sideways there but he's ended up down the inside of Jackalette and so is McIntyre so Jackalette's from wide exit there has really cost him dear Tom but He's going to be grateful that he's got that slipstream now as McIntyre comes to the outside. Yeah, you uh, you don't want to go too wide out of there going onto the curb. Uh, onto the curb sorry. Uh, there's quite a nasty bump on the inside, which can really harm you. As they do touch there, I'm not sure whether that was... Uh, might be a little bit of Netco coming into play, but we don't want to see too much of that on the banking. But they're going into the bus stop now in a full-on RAF formation then. So let's see who comes out on top here. Jackalette tips it in in P4 behind the number 98 of Jack Ashton. Um, but they all seem to get through there cleanly. And the two front running guys are seeming to walk away with it at the moment. Adam McNally and Pete Van Gaal. But we'll stay with this one for the minute. Jackalette really holding his own at the moment, Chaz. But he's coming under a lot of pressure from Emilio Largo. And he's off. He's gone into the bank and he comes back down. Everyone seems to avoid it. I don't know how they did. Um, really unfortunate for him there. You, that is not one of the places where you want to have an accident. But we'll go back to the battle, go heading towards turn one. I'm sure we'll get a replay in a minute. Um, but McIntyre now really making inroads. He's up 17 places from the start, up to fifth position. Coming under a lot of pressure from the AM drivers now. Down into the first corner, down the gears. Turn, turn the car in. You want to see where the car is on the inside. And that's how you get that move done quickly. And that's how you make yourself a pro driver, Chaz. Certainly is. But it was a real shame for what happened there with Jackalette. Just came up a little bit. It wasn't all the way down, and it's just a tiny touch like that. Luke Cooper's the luckiest one there because he seemed to go through him. Benjamin Mears, I think that was, in the Automate Knock Hill car. Sorry, it was uh, it was Scott Malcolm. 
really miraculous dodge there as well, but real shame for Jekyll that. I mean, as, as I just said, it, it doesn't take much to put the car on the wall very hard there, and there's not really any coming back for it with the, uh, the speed you're doing. As we see Jason Cooper now attacking Jack Ashton down the inside. Jack's really wide there, and the other Jack, Mr. McIntyre, is going to be right behind him. These guys are nowhere near McNally and Van Gaal. McNally's got a three-second lead ahead of him now, so he's going to be uh, trying to beat Van Gaal for the win. And it's surely going to come down to the wire between those two. They're in a race all on their own. We've got to think, though, that if they keep battling and battling, then, uh, well, they may actually end up sort of backing themselves into this lot, but I'm pretty sure that they're both wise enough to just uh, keep it as is and just try and just go forward together. You can see them actually side by side, though. I say that, and they're doing the complete opposite. They're, uh, they're giving it a good go. As we go three wide here, Jack McIntyre hoping not to hit the wall again. As you see, Adam McNally there. Still got that St George's Cross on the back of the car to remind me that he's definitely not Scottish. But um, he's, he's back at the front of the race, Tom, and uh, doing a great job for Youth Energy. Yeah, he is, isn't he? Um, we said at the start that Youth Energy, well, they haven't been as consistent as the Momo boys and the Swift Cooper boys um, in getting race wins and results. They've always been up there with them. And we know that when they do get into fights with them, they really can hold their own, the Youth Energy guys. Um, as we see, Adam McNally takes an interesting line, pushes the car up high, um, doesn't defend from Pete Van Gaal that hard. Uh, maybe he knows something that we don't. So he tucks in behind him on the slipstream as they cr cross the start-finish straight once again to start lap number five here at Daytona in the night. As you see the stream of headlights behind them. And this is going to be an interesting one going into turn one, isn't it? As we see Ashton now who's now a little bit to Brian Holmes. The Youth Energy guys really fighting hard, but I just want to give a little shout out to Emilio Largo, Chaz. He's been fighting so well all evening. Um, he's been up there with the pro guys and he is an AM driver and he, he's, he's really holding his own. He's got uh, Brian Holmes there and Jack Ashton who are obviously going to be working together and he's, he's sticking with them. So uh, good job on you, uh, Emilio. Going really, going really well here. Yeah, he's really doing a good job so far, fighting tooth and nail. I think it might be his first race in the series, actually, tonight as well. So uh, certainly making an impressive debut, really sticking it to the likes of Luke Cooper. Brian Holmes is in that battle as well. Jack Ashton, of course, and Jason Cooper still leading this big train of cars. And it's just a, it's an all-star field, this, at the moment. I mean, these, these guys have uh, got a lot of talent between them. And currently, the talent that is between the two Cooper Esports cars is Ashton and his teammate Brian Holmes who of course had a really good finish in the uh, second race he's gained 19 places so far I mean even if you look at the top 10 I mean Van Gaal started a pole still there at the moment Adam McNally gained 10 places Jason Cooper's gained 14 Jack Ashton's got 7 Brian Holmes 19 Luke Cooper 13 Jack McIntyre 15 it's just amazing that these guys have got so many places David Hampson's just got his 17th position gained to the race obviously a lot of these gaining this through the incident towards the beginning but even so uh, even so sorry you've just got to push it and uh, try and get everything you can Tom and we go on board with Brian Holmes now you can see that very bright roll cage of Jason Cooper in front and he's going to hopefully put that in his rear view mirror but the slipstream Jack Ashton is giving is actually going to Jason right now and is Jason going to have enough time to go up he is Brian's wary to it though oh no there's a turn and he's in the wall I'm not sure whether Ashton came up to defend it, but somehow that car's still facing the right way, but not quite sure how they made contact there. I was focusing so much on the uh, the inside of Brian Holmes's car that didn't really see the touch, but it just, just seemed like it was the tiniest of touches, and round he goes. Once again, we see contact on the oval, causing a massive accident. McIntyre defend... Well, not defending, just commanding manoeuvre around the outside there, flinging it around the outside. Amazing car control, and he's got it done, Tom. Both of the Cooper Esports cars probably didn't know what had hit them then. Yeah, I don't think they did, did they? He just come out of nowhere. He did the full Danny Ricardo um, and just was late on the brakes. Got it sideways. And, uh, you know, it, it was the perfect move, to be honest. Um, as we see now, what happened to Ashton um, on the replay? So the Swift Cooper Esports guy is behind him. You've got Brian Holmes as well. And he goes a little bit high. And I, it's, too, it's quite hard to call that one. Uh, to be honest with you, Chaz, but Ashton did a Leclerc and managed to get facing around the right way again. Um, I think it was just one car coming up and another one coming down, to be honest, over the curb there, which is not what you really want. No, uh, real shame, to be fair. It just seemed like a bit too much of a sudden movement on the oval, and, and it can really upset it. And I mean, a lot of the time, the iRacing service can pick up these movements and everything, and, and it just seemed to unsettle the two of them, and off he went, unfortunately. 
It doesn't look like uh, Jason Cooper's been that badly affected, but someone that was, I think, is Tyler Lugo, uh, Tyler Lugo Vickery. Once again, getting his name wrong. I really do apologise, Tyler. But um, it seemed like he was quite affected by that. I'm not sure whether it's damaged the front end. We'll see as it comes around. It looks like the bonnet's gone, but it doesn't seem like the car is too hindered in a straight line. So he'll be hoping. He's got one more lap to go, and he's got quite a big gap behind him as well. He's got Josh Thompson two and a half seconds back, but with it being Josh Thompson, that might not take long to come down, to be fair. But Just thought um, I would say the bonnet's showing on our, on my screen here. And ah, OK. Thus the broadcast. But yeah, you're right. He has lost a lot of time, hasn't he? So. Yeah, the, the bonnet's gone on my screen. Not sure where uh, where it's gone. He's obviously just nipped past the uh, dealership on the way and just grabbed one on uh, on his way past the pits on your screen, Al. But there you go. Come um, on, damage model, you know. That's <laughs> going to fix yeah. that stuff, that's for sure. Well, I don't know if I was there. I'd be, I'd be asking the marshals whether I could have it if it's flown off. It tends to work. But we see McIntyre right now. He's hard at work with Brian Holmes and Jason Cooper. Two really, really quick guys in this series having a fight with him. Luke Cooper there, still fighting with Emilio Largo. He's been a real standout driver for me tonight, Tom. I don't know about you, but he's just been brilliant in that little uh, little green machine. Yeah, he has, hasn't he? As I said before, he's he's got quicker guys out there um, who are pro drivers and are seasoned pro drivers, and he's really holding his own. He's got the likes of, well, look at that line up there, FOMO, Youth Energy and Swift Cooper. Um, and we know how strong those teams and their drivers are, and he's been sticking with them throughout all of it. So... A really great drive from him this evening um, but we are currently on the last lap of the race uh, van gaul still defending hard from adam mcnally and we know how but we do know how how adam mcnally can be my famous commentary i think from interlagos that he showed me your time and time again on facebook um just the way that he can go into a corner late on the brakes and go round the outside so it's all to play for here Chaz, and i really don't have any of them that i could put my money on yet no, you've got to just think, though, from McNally's perspective here, you've got to just be really tactical with it. And as Pete Harrod said earlier in the chat, the guy that's leading at the bus stop at the end of the last lap is not going to win the race. But what McNally wants to do, now he's in a bit of a dangerous situation here, because he wants to be a bit further back from Van Gaal, so he gets a lot of slipstream to get a real big overspeed. But behind him is Jack McIntyre. So McNally wants to get on the brakes a bit early, leave a bit of a gap between him now, but you can see just how close McIntyre is. McNally's got a really good run off there. Van Gaal isn't uh, hanging around though. But McIntyre, look at that. You've got to think actually Jack could probably take his second win of the night from there. Let's have a look then. Around the banking. Looking at the gaps in the bottom right. You can see coming down now for McNally. But it's also starting to come down for McIntyre as well. We go on board with Jack. Alex just read my mind. I was just about to say that. McIntyre having to... Well, he's just following in his teammates' footsteps here. Van Gaal. Here comes Jack, he's going to go through the middle, he's going to try and get a bit of slipstream off McNally. Is Adam going to get there in time? It's going to be really close across the line. It's Adam McNally takes your third win of the evening. Jack McIntyre nearly gets there. Momo, third for Van Gaal. Brian Holmes, fourth. Here's Nick McCarron, Craig Evans and your own Ursum is in that as well. Around the outside of him is Scott Malcolm. Malcolm doesn't quite make it, nearly four wide at the end there as well. Great racing by those boys. Karen comes out on top with those guys. We've got fireworks, of course, with it being the night race. There's Steve Hefford coming across the line ahead of Mikey Key. Joe McDonald is just finished with Hampson there as well. Very close between those pair, actually. Um, I'm showing that as... Oh, actually, sorry. I'm just trying to have a quick look. Where's it gone? I just saw Hampson a second ago. Oh, it was McDonald and Hampson. Three hundredths of a second between the two of them. So a nice scrap towards the end there. And Diogo Melro asking the main question, why move up? So we'll have to take that up with, uh, with Peter Van Gogh later. As the final cars come across the line then, Tom, another action-packed race, but we've got to talk about that incident at the start, unfortunately. It was it was a shame for it to happen, but it just seemed a little bit eager from people going into Turn 1. Yeah, I think it's the case of it's the final round, um, and people are, are getting quite feisty, aren't they? Um, but as we know, it's the same as endurance racing. I mean, we didn't have a safety car, but yellow flags breed yellow flags. And incidents breed incidents. So um, I think you just need to have your wits about you into turn one, like we said. Um, if you're going in there too hot and you're not going to make it, just try and hold back a little bit and try and not go for the move. But apart from that, it gave us some great racing in race three, didn't it? Yeah, it really did. It was still entertaining to watch. And it was nice to see the uh, the cars working so well around this track again. And it's, it's sort of proved to us once again that you can put this MX-5 anywhere and it'll provide great racing. Um I remember saying from uh, Marco last night, actually, um, also mentioned that Glenn McGee 
Uh, I really hope it's Glenn McGee anyway. It's, um, the, he's obviously won one of the series on iRacing to drive the Mazda in real life. And he, of course, got a uh, first-hand experience of it. And he said that the slipstream is very realistic in this car. You wouldn't think that it would be as strong as it is, but the amount of the, amount of, uh, the sort of size of the hole that this car punches in the air is unbelievable. And they really have simulated it very well. So hats off to iRacing for doing such a great job. And, of course, we are on the eSports Network tonight as well. That isn't the reason I'm saying that. Just it, It's just they've done a great job of it at the end of the day. And hopefully we can uh, continue to see such good content going forward. But the MX-5 really is a masterpiece. And these guys are, I'd say, doing it justice. They really, really do provide some smashing racing. Yeah, they do, don't they? Um, as I said, the amount of practice that goes into this is uh, is second to none. But um, So is your... Uh... Here's your race winner, Adam McNally, in the number one U, uh, number one place. Sorry, in the number four seven eight Youth Energy car behind him, Jack McIntyre, literally about five hundredths of a second between them. Pete Van Gaal comes in third with Brian Holmes in fourth, stolen drive from him. Jason Cooper in fifth with Luke Cooper in sixth, with Emilio Largo winning your AM um, your AM Championship round, so to speak, in seventh. Josh Thompson in eighth with Tyler Lugo Vickery in ninth. Nick McCarron in 10th, Scott Malcolm in 11th, and Craig Evans in 12th. Your own Ursum in 13th with Alex Cherney in 14th. David Ayres in 15th, Joe McDonald in 16th with uh, David Hampson in 17th. Steve Hefford in 18th with Mikey Key in 19th. Pete Newman finished 20th place with Jordan Giddings behind him in 21st. Max Wright in the Auto Knock Hill car in 22nd. Mick Barry in 23rd. Benjamin Mears in the another Auto Knock Hill car in 24th. Anthony Mott in 25th. Jamie Ayers in 26th and in 27th was George Simmons and Jack Ashton was 28th. Rounding out your uh, non-finish by the looks of it is Carl Jacolette, Dan Hunt, Cesare Rizzo, Ryan Walker, Carl Hardy, James McRitchie and Craig Williams. Thank you very much, Tom. And for the final race of the evening then, we will bring Alex in for the third and final spinny wheel to determine the reverse grid. And, uh, well... Let's see who is in contention. Um, there's only one car that was actually lapped down, and that's George Simmons. But behind him, interestingly enough, uh, was Jamie Ayres. So, Alex, we'll uh, leave it with you to determine who's going to be on pole. Yeah, let's do it. Decent spin. Just coming into play. 50th, going to miss that, I think. 25th, could be a small one. And it is indeed. Well, Jamie Ayres misses out by one place then. George Simmons missing out by two. That puts Anthony Mott on pole position. He had a great first race. So hopefully he's going to be uh, having such a good one in the uh, the final one as well. Benjamin Mears will join him on the front row with Mick Barry, Max Wright, and Jordan Giddings fifth on the grid. And also quick shout out to Pete Newman, who's going to be starting from sixth. So Pete's probably going to be one of the favourites to win this, I'd say, Tom, because uh, he's been quick all along. So do you reckon he could uh, he could give it a go? Yeah, I think he could give it a go. Jordan Giddens as well. He showed great uh, great promise in race two. So I think those guys will be uh, fighting it out quite well. And you've got Steve Hefford behind them and we know how quick he is. So I think it's all going to be to play for in race. And especially with a slipstream as well to level it out. So in about 10, 15 minutes time for the final time this evening, Tom and Alex and I will join you back on the iRacing Esports Network for the final race of the evening. Don't go away.
Welcome back to the iRacing Esports Network and the Daytona International Speedway for the final race of the evening and for the season in the BSR MX5 Autumn Cup. I'm Chaz Draycott with Tom Jacobs alongside me and Alex Simpson on the cameras as well. And I've had a message in the meantime from a Mr. Steve Hefford who's taking part tonight and has been taking part in the entire season and he's telling me that he cannot be caught in the championship. He hasn't clarified whether that's in the overall season or whether it's tonight, but I don't think he's at the top of tonight, so... It may well be that Steve has just become the champion, and I'm hoping that someone may confirm that for me, as that's still very provisional. Um, we're just lining up on the grid then, for the final race of the evening. I've got overcast conditions again, Tom, so maybe we'll get some more grip, uh, but if, if you'd like to do the honest and fly through the grid for us, please, mate. Yes, so uh, P1... Oh, sorry, we are, oh, we're <laughs> on our way anyway. So, um, so Anthony Mott leads then, as they build up three lights, four lights, five lights, it's uh, and David Croft, it's lights out and away we go then. And uh, Benjamin Mew's got a fantastic start for Auto Met Knock Hill as they come down towards turn one. Anthony Mott didn't get the best start that he would have wanted, but you see Jordan Giddings there, he's on the outside of Mick Barry as they go into turn one. Jordan Giddings with a really late dive there, pushes it up into P2, and it looks like everyone threw cleanly now. But uh, Anthony Mocha has got a fantastic start, and uh, it looks to be that Benjamin Mews is just falling back through the pack now. He uh, didn't get the best start off the line, and got a bit too much wheel spin, and it's cost him dearly there. Yeah, it certainly has. Um, just noticing as well, Steve Hefford, who I just mentioned a second ago, seems to be in a different coloured livery for this race. It's a bright purple car I've got in fourth place. Not quite sure whether that's only on my screen or not, but it's only on yours. Year. Yeah, it's, it's in a bright purple MX-5 of mine. I'll just reload my uh, my paints. I apologise for that. Typical that it's going to be the same driver I mentioned before. But, yeah, he's already up to fourth. Four places gained. Jordan getting three places gained. And he's up to second. We've got a great scrap behind them there. And you can see, even further down the field, they're going two or even three wide. So, it's really, uh, really kicking off here on the first lap already. Bit of damage to the front of Steve Evans' car as well. So, obviously, a bit of contact for him in the first few corners. 
Jordan Giddings is coming under pressure now from Mick Barry, who's going to get the slipstream on him. There's a great sort of gaggle of four cars as well, a bit closer down the order there. That's Craig Evans, I think, Joe McDonald and Alex Cherney. And they have Josh Thompson behind as well. So this is the battle for the front then. Number 23, Jordan Giddings chasing down number 46, Anthony Mott. Anthony staying to the inside. That's going to allow the others to go three wide into here. The bus stop on the first lap, boys, calm it down. Jordan Giddings a bit harder on the brakes. Anthony Mott makes it through. Jordan recovers it, though, really well. Pete Newman's going to get a good run now. He's going to try and get past Mick Barry. He goes around the outside. And another one of the result clothing cars there with uh, Hampson and Max Wright pretty much pushing each other through the uh, through the bus stop there, Tom. And, yeah, it's frantic already for the final race of the season. Yeah, it is frantic already, isn't it? But everyone got through cleanly, so uh, better than we saw in race three. And we just see Pete Newman there. has got some damage to the rear of that CQR car. So, uh, yeah, he's um, not sure what happened there to him. But the Am driver's fighting hard next to him now. But he seems to be they're going to put it three wide into turn number one as Jordan Giddings tries to go around the outside into turn number one as well. It looks like he has taken the lead. And he's, but he, but uh, yeah, but Anthony Mott fights back then. And that's brought Steve Hefford into play. That's brought him right up behind them. So now Giddings is going to have to defend from Hefford and try to take Anthony Mott as well. Mott defending the inside line in the number 46 car. He'll be looking back in his rearview mirror and he'll see that angry Momo car and the uh, Jordan Giddings' car as well. But going into the kink then, Jordan Giddings on the outside. I don't think he's going to make it stick through here. It'll be a big, tall order. But he'll have the inside line coming down into the, to the slow hairpin. Steve Hefford has a little look. Seems to take Anthony Mott there. So Steve Hefford and Jordan Giddings now P1 and P2. But Chaz, it has brought Pete Newman into play now. Um, so it's all still all to play for for that elusive last win of the season. Yeah, everyone wants to be the last driver to win a race. I'm pretty sure that uh, these guys are going to be confident that they can get that done. Pete Newman has been quick all season. I mean, he's very quick in, uh, in most cars that he's in. He's, of course, a BSR veteran. A lot of time in the BSR TC Pro Series. Jordan Giddings seemingly getting out of the way of the guys that are coming past him here. He's just going onto the outside, but he knows that he can get the slipstream once they're out of the bus stop. So he's playing a really good tactical game so far here. Pete Newman going all the way to the outside, sacrificing that slipstream. He knows it's not going to matter that much into the bus stop. Two by two almost. Steve Hefford still remains in the lead. Oh no! Anthony Martin Giddings make contact. They form a wall in front of Newman. Somehow he doesn't hit them. But that's a real, real shame for those boys. They were both on for very promising results. I'm not sure who that was on really. I can't call it after just seeing it from that angle. But that's a real, real shame, Tom. It was looking like it was going to be a great scrap between them as we look at it again. Yeah, so we'll look down at it again on the, uh, on the replay here. It just looks like Giddings come across but as Mott was sticking the nose in uh, up into the bus stop. Um, I think maybe Giddings could have given him a little oh. bit more room. Um, but yeah, it's, it's six, one and a half dozen the other. But we go back to back to Pete Newman then, uh, fighting hard now. But it has brought Josh Thompson, who's had up 14 places already, Chaz. So he could be one to take the last win of the season. But then again, any of these boys could, because just look at this absolute gaggle of cars that we've got all coming through and everyone seems to be fighting nice and cleanly um, oh, through the pack that. at the moment but there's someone around in the background not sure who that is but I'm sure we'll find out eventually um, but yeah even the, the result clothing boys are up there as well so you've got the AM drivers fighting pros pros fighting AMs and it really is still anyone's to play for but Steve Hefford going really well out in front at the moment Chaz yeah it's uh, strong stuff so far we saw a bit of a strange incident between Newman and Evans actually as they came into turn one um, Evans pushing him down the straight I think Newman got a bit fed up of it and uh, seemed to slam the anchors on he's got a bit of damage on the rear end of the car but Craig I'm not sure oh McDonald in the background is off there's a youth energy car and one of the um, oh that was one of the I'm just trying to think of the name that was one of the Swift Cooper Esports cars McNally got held up by it as well don't think he made too much contact he's now down the inside of Hampson there he tries to go around him it must have been Luke Cooper because I think he's lost a couple of the positions that he made He's side by side with George Simmons around the banking. George has gained 15 places at the moment. Dan Hunt is the biggest mover with 16 places gained. Jack McIntyre has just gained his 15th in front of these guys. Nick McCarron was the victim of that one. Newman getting a really big shove down the straight from Josh Thompson there. He's trying to push him past Craig Evans. He tries to get out of it. You can see him wiggling the car to the left. Craig Evans goes ahead for the Northern Lights racing GT Omega car. 45 machine. These boys really starting to, uh, to bunch up now. Steve Hefford, who is now in the correct livery on my screen, I must add. 
is now uh, running away with this one, Tom. And what a way to do it. I mean, if he has obviously been uh, classed as overall champion for the year, then fair play to him. It's a fantastic achievement and he'll, uh, he'll be happy to round out the Autumn series with a win. Yeah, he will be, won't he? It'll be good for him um, to get that. It'll boost his morale going into into the next part of the season. But as we look here, we've got five cars and they've gone four wide coming towards turn one. Pete Newman, rightfully so, backs out of that one. He doesn't want to ruin his race. Uh, but Josh Thompson goes up the inside here. And there's a lot of there's a guys laying on the brakes and they've gone very deep. Brian Holmes involved in that as well. Uh, but Josh Thompson's come out on top, Chaz, and he's a wise old owl, is Josh. He knew exactly, like I said before, where those guys were going to go. And he managed to make himself put it, put the car into a position where you know you either take you either go through me or you let me or you can see that position to me um so yeah just just great driving from him and now he's going to be going down and trying to chase down steve hefford at the front but hefford's got a really good lead at the moment um it's it, it's quite a big gap that they've got to try and make up now yeah just over two seconds for steve hefford well about two and a half as they come through here now and you've got to think he might be out of slip through the range as brian holmes gets two wheels on the grass alex churney's going to put him under pressure but it was a really, really uh, scary moment down the straight. That was holding my breath as they came across the line four wide, nearly five wide. But they uh, managed to keep it all under control. But it was Craig Evans that lost out. He was on the outside. And himself and Brian Holmes nearly made contact on the brakes. But this battle is not spreading out, really. There's a little bit more of a gap between them as they naturally come onto the oval. But this is just going to condense more. And Brian Holmes has got a really good run on Thompson. Thompson doing uh, what Giddings was doing earlier. Just leaving it out on the outside and letting the guy on the inside go through just so it doesn't ruin any of your uh, momentum for either driver Alex Cherney now down the inside he's going to take fourth place sorry third place from Josh Thompson but how long that's going to last we don't know Pete Newman still in the battle as well Jack McIntyre on the back of this he's going to want a really good run out of that final corner so we'll keep an eye on him as well look at the gap Steve Hefford's got now it's 2.2 seconds back to Brian Holmes they need to work like a peloton, don't they, if they're going to catch up with Hefford and they're not kind of doing that. I think that was what Josh was kind of trying to do there. He's going to go up high, he's going to come back down and get the draft and go back in front of Brian and um, then let Brian um, stream him uh, again. So, but uh, yeah, Journey got in there and uh, yeah, ruined that idea. Yeah, you're right there. They definitely do need to work together in this one and just not spoil each other's momentum. I mean, that's what it's all about. It's trying to keep the slipstream and... I think they're just having a great time battling each other. Jack McIntyre, their fastest lap of the race. That's quickly topped by Dan Hunt by six tenths of a second as well. So not a small difference by any stretch of the imagination. But look at these guys, two by two all the way around there. That's brilliant. Jack McIntyre, two wheels on the grass. Your own Ursum off the side of the circuit there. It was like something out of 1970s Formula One, that, uh, that there, Tom. By the, by the end of the time you get to... By, sorry, by the time you get to the end of a 1970s F1 race, there's just cars littered all around the track. There's just no corner for health and safety on the, uh, on the edges, is there? No, there isn't at all. I mean, I think that lasted all the way up until the early 90s, didn't it? I seem to remember Derek Warwick parked at the side of the track. I think it was Monza, and it, they just left it there because, yeah, it might be in the way, but it, it'll be fine in the end. So, um, fortunately, we've come a long way in safety. As we saw in Abu Dhabi, they got uh, Kimi Raikkonen's car clear pretty quickly. But back in those days, I think they would have just left it there. So, um, yeah, so uh, we've got Hefford still out in front, although that gap has come down now. It's at about 1.2, 1.3 seconds as they come onto the oval. Um, I don't think he's made any mistakes. I think they've just slowly started to catch him with a little bit of slipstream they could have, Chad. But Hefford has got damage to the front of that car, so that won't be helping it out greatly with aerodynamically um, on these long runs. And, of course, all the guys behind are constantly slipstreaming each other, which will give them a, a nice speed boost. So, um, yeah, I don't think it's all Steve Hefford's own way. We come into the bus stop now, and it's well, his best part of still just about 1.3 seconds. Um, actually, no, it's down to what is it about half a second now? So, yeah, it's still anyone's guess here, Chaz. Yeah, Steve's been really brought back into this now. Brian Holmes is really putting the pressure on, and he's got a long run up to the back of that Momo car now. So, surely Brian Holmes is going to take lead. You can see Steve there doing what he needs to do, just getting out of the way, not ruining the momentum. And now he's going to get the slipstream back all clips the, uh, the apron a little bit there. You can see the car bounce around. Alex Cherney's going to get the slipstream as well, but you've got to think Steve might make the move here and go back into the lead at turn one. Cherney might want to uh, interrupt the proceedings as well. I don't think he's going to have anywhere to go, so he just backs out a bit. Nice and safe there. He's not quite bumping him, because as we saw last night, it's uh, it's easy to unsettle these cars at the rear end. A bit later on the brakes is Holmes. Gets it turned in. Steve is wise to it. Stays in second place, but 
Thompson, Newman, McIntyre, Simmons, Evans, they're all on the back of this now. And well, just this one and, uh, and one more lap to go after this, Tom. This is going to be a fantastic finish and a great way to end the season, hopefully. And I've got my fingers crossed on both hands without incident, but we might have just jinxed it. So let's see. Yeah, you might have just given him the contact is curse there, Charles, that we've seen so many times. Um, but yeah, it's still anyone's to play for. And Heffer's looking very, very strong. But so is so is Holmes, Journey, Thompson and McIntyre. And uh, so is Newman as well. So you can't really count any of these guys off. Um, it's just it's just been brilliant all season, is it? And the, this is what we come to expect. We've had some incidents, but I think the way the guys have developed over the season has just been it's just been really good. Um, we've seen the, the quality of racing get better and better. We just see uh, Cherney there going out quite wide, taking a wide line and giving Hefford plenty of room. So um, we're on to the banking again then. And then Thompson tucks himself up behind. But as I say, yeah, the experience that these guys have gained has been brilliant. Um, and the, the quality of racing has really developed throughout the season. So props to them all for no matter where they finish um, to just have, giving us a great season here on the iRacing Esports Network. Yeah, it really does. And it's, uh, it's been fantastic to watch these. I mean, even throughout their smaller season as well. The spring, summer, winter and... Uh, sorry, spring, summer and now autumn series coming to an end. And we see this fantastic train of cars. These have been sort of the guys that have really represented the great racing as well at the front of the field. And it's these main teams, of course, Momo, Swift Cooper, uh, Swift Cooper Esports, Youth Energy. Josh Thompson's always been there and thereabouts as well. Um, we must say as well, obviously, it's Momo's last race, this, um, under that name. Of course, with the new regulations coming in with the permissions for logos to be used, I know that the team have been trying to speak to Momo Italy about actually getting an endorsement from them, but not sure where negotiations are with that. McIntyre going to the outside then. They're nearly four wide here as they go across the line. Steve Hefford's just going to be in front of Thompson, I think. Well, Thompson just about has it over the line then. With Hefford, McIntyre, Holmes and Cherney. Four wide into turn one, boys. That's just absolutely mad. Oh, there's contact between Hefford and Thompson. Can Josh save it? Not quite. Real shame. Oh, Hefford's around as well. Heffer did it himself on the exit. Not sure whether he's just overheated the tyres in the slide or anything and then just spun it on the exit, but real shame there. Those two boys out of it. And that means that Brian Holmes is now to the front of the field. Oh, a bit of contact with Newman and Evans there as well. It's getting a bit scrappy as we go up to this last lap, Tom. It is, isn't it? I mean, they know what's coming up. They know this is the last lap of the uh, of the autumn series. Um, so it's, well, it really is anyone's to play for. They don't want to get too scrappy low and ruin their race. Um, as Thompson and Hefford have just done. I think that's just a, a racing incident there. But um, So Brian Holmes leads then from McIntyre. I don't know if McIntyre can make it the double header this evening, um, but Shirley's back there as well. And you still can't count out Pete Newman or, jo or George Simmons as well. Um, they're going to be they're going to be at the back, but they're going to have some brilliant slipstream as they come off of the bus stop. So as they enter the uh, enter the banking corners for the last time in this series this season, then I think it's anyone's to play for, Chaz. And to be honest with you, I wouldn't want to be the guy coming out of the bus stop in first place. No, and I don't think that person is going to be the race winner either. Jack McIntyre might give it a go though, but you've got to think Cherney is probably going to be one of the favourites of this one right now. He's hanging back from this because he knows what's coming. He wants to get a really good run through McIntyre. Oh, in the background, big accident. Oh no, and Simmons is over. He's rolling through the bus stop. Not what anyone wants to be doing. But look at McIntyre. Look how far back he is. Oh, there's Simmons just there. <laughs> like, that was like a great white shark popping up out of the water. I just jumped up into shot and off he goes. Thanks very much for that, George. I mean, I know that you're probably not the most uh, pleased with that right now. But here it is then. The fight for the win in your final race of the evening. Once again, Rob Ball with Jack McIntyre. Brian Holmes has just got nothing. He's just There's nothing he can do. Are we going to see a Swift Cooper eSports car of Alex Journey go past? Here goes Jack McIntyre. Cherney's not going to get there, so it's going to be Jack McIntyre that takes your win in the fourth and final race. Cherney gets second. He only just does it over Brian Holmes, but Cherney gets there. Cherney does it. Brilliant stuff. As they all filter through then over the line, there's Luke Cooper. He finished in 11th, and he was only a couple of seconds off the lead. There's Walker, Ashton, and Giddings. Oh, nearly getting there for Ashton, but not quite. Giddings will be gutted after being higher up earlier on. Really good scrap here between Malcolm and David Ayres. They're going to be across the line together. It's just just going to be Scott Malcolm really close finishes and that's the beauty of these ovals I suppose in these cars you just got to get every little bit of momentum you can but there's your race winner then Jack McIntyre he's getting a push from Brian Holmes right now and I'm sure we're going to see Jack giving it some of his usual drifting and of course we did speak to the uh, the Momo guys <coughs> excuse me before the evening and they did say that they are going to be uh, seeing the team off in style so I'm sure we might see some drifting and some donuts of course there you go Jack McIntyre doing his usual 
completely sideways around the hairpin. That's just car control beyond anything I can comprehend on iRacing. But another amazing finish, Tom. Absolutely awesome to watch. Yeah, it was great. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it at home as much as we did. That those last few laps as Brian Holmes just spins out there. Um, yeah, those last few laps were absolutely great, weren't they? And it just goes to show what a great series this is. And it's the sort of racing that, that iRacing needs. Um, obviously, with the, the official stuff is, is great, but I think sometimes the, the real love uh, for sim racing lies in league racing. And um, these guys, as I say, practice so hard for this, and it just—it's just hats off to them for everything they've done in this in this part of the season. Um, so yeah, just great racing all evening. Obviously, the incident in, in race three wasn't brilliant, but um, yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to the next the next chapter of this uh, brilliant series. Yeah, it's always been good fun as we see uh, Dan Hunt there taking an unconventional line through the bus stop, and then uh, <laughs> Jason Cooper spins it out as well. These boys will obviously just be very excited to finish the season. It's always a uh, a nice moment, but there is the uh, the man of the mo moment, and that's Jack McIntyre. That was a terrible pun. I'm really sorry. <laughs> um, he's going to be just over the moon with that. Really, really exciting race all the way to the end. Used the slipstream very well, and hoping that nobody interrupts with their proceedings. We may see a, uh, a nice display from the Momo guys any moment now. There's a lot of room to use on the Daytona circuit, so hopefully we'll see a couple of donuts, maybe a bit of drifting. You never know. Of course, he's celebrating not only the team championship and that, but obviously his own personal championship as well in this autumn series is McIntyre. So, great yeah. job. So. Yeah, he won the summer series as well earlier on. Um, yeah. He finished that one out at Alton Park, as you see Amps oh. there flying by. Or th well, was that Rizzo? I think it might have been Rizzo, that one. Let's say, please um, no one hear him. Oh. <laughs> efforts <laughs> efforts <laughs> deploying smoke just yeah. to try and uh, add to it. <laughs> think Airshow-esque. Air show esque <laughs> But oh, yes. the, this, this team has been absolutely amazing all through the, the multiple series that they've done. They've been an absolute joy to watch. Their organisation in qualifying, their slipstreaming and things has just been second to none. And the overall driving skill that they've all shown has just been fantastic. And of course, the livery as well. You can't really see it from here. What a beautiful shot from lining up. But the um, <laughs> <laughs> look at the state of Steve's car. That's just fantastic. I mean, that sums up perfectly. Jamie Ed though, <laughs> the four nearly hitting his teammates and oh there's gonna be contact. Oh there you go. But the um <laughs> the delivery up close has actually got the Momo logo. Um oh the, <laughs> well that didn't go to plan boys. But it's got the uh, the Momo logo sort of ghosted all over it, just a slightly darker red. It's a beautiful looking bit of kit, but those boys very well deserved championships for them. I believe Steve Hefford is the overall champion now after that, and he can't be caught, but I mean I hate this phrase in itself, but don't quote me on that. But like I say, those guys have just been untouchable. I mean, I know that in, in the short time you've been seeing the season as well, Tom, they've probably given that impression very quickly, have they? Yeah, they have. They absolutely have. Um, and uh, a lot of people say to me at work and stuff with the high racing thing that I do, oh, it's, it's not it's not a real thing. But the bond you get between teams is just is just great. And you treat it as a, as a real-life racing team. Um, you are <laughs> essentially family, as we see a couple of the guys just uh, on their side there and on their roofs and stuff but you you do create a great bond and they've been fantastic all season and my, my hat goes off to them it, it really does and then they've they've shown a lot of they've had they've had some ups and downs they've had a few offs but at the end of the day i think they really instill what what i racing is all about and it really is a team sport and a family at the end of the day i think steve hefford's having a few up and downs right now with the state of that car of uh, what it's been through but yeah, these guys just enjoying the moment, and that's what it's all about. Like Tom says, it's a bit of a family thing. As Nick McCarron ends up on his roof there, Jamie uh, Jamie Ayers and Peter Van Gogh giving him a bit of a hand. McIntyre helping Steve Hefford improve the state of his car. Euron Ersum's still there as well, so I bet he's getting a nice view of this. I'm not quite sure what's happened to Euron there. But uh, this is it. They're just having a bit of fun, aren't they? And at the end of the day, we all love to do that. As Nick McCarron, not quite there you go. He's back on all fours now. But it's well-deserved, as we've said, and... There's not really much else you can say now. They've, uh, <laughs> they've pretty much trashed those MX-5s, so they'll be hoping that... Uh, they'll, well, I'm sure they'll be painting them in a completely different colour for the next season coming, so I wouldn't want to be the guy that's trying to get the paint off it. As McIntyre manages to roll it all on his own twice there into the pit wall, that's just... Uh, that's hell of a feat in itself, actually, Alex, isn't it, to, to do that? It must have some... Oh, there you go. Karen's done the same. <laughs> Great stuff. Right. Let's just... Um, for a second get a replay we've got a few people waiting to have a little interview so we will do that as well we ought to congratulate scott malcolm as well who has pretty much wrapped up the um 
Am Championship pending any penalties protest from his teammate um, Ben Mears. And um, yeah, Swift Cooper Esports second place in the team championship as well. And, uh, noteworthy from Youth Energy. So um, pretty good season all round for those guys. And again, we'll get some final classifications on the overall standings. I'm sure posted on Facebook once all protests and appeals and things like that are in. Right, who do you fancy having a chat with first, lads? Well, let's have a look. Um, well, I think to be fair, someone we should bring in. Um, didn't see a massive amount of him tonight. Mr. Adam McNally of Youth Energy. Um, Adam, bit of a chaotic evening, very frantic racing from where we were. Um, how did it go from your end? Well, not the best for the night in my race and getting caught up in other crashes. You know, just way to go, but I'd like to just start by saying uh, congratulations to Momo. Fought hard all season. Absolute epic win for them. Congratulations to Steve, Jack and uh, Jamie and all for the top three throughout the season. Yeah, I've done an amazing job. We just saw him doing some celebratory donuts there. Um, Youth Energy, though, he's put in a fantastic uh, fantastic effort again this season. And, and the team's really grown and gone from strength to strength. I mean, we, we saw you a lot further up front than I think you were in the summer series and, uh, of course, the spring series as well. Um, yeah. are, are you happy to, well, hoping to obviously continue that for the winter series yeah. as well? We're hoping we're going to get the team back to the way it was just before the four seasons started and get the original drivers back in, hopefully bring back a strong team again, ready for next year and take the challenge back to Momo and obviously you've got Cooper Sports as well. They're going to be a big threat next season. Yeah, it's been, it's, uh, it's been really tight up front as well and we've enjoyed watching it. I, mean, I was just saying towards the end of that last race that there's those sort of three main teams that have spearheaded the whole championship and done such a great job. But um, yeah, we, obviously we hope to see you back as well, Adam. Um, are there any, I'd like to say, there are changes to drivers. Is there any uh, any sort of gossip that you want to spill in terms of that, or is that all going to be revealed in due course? It'll just, all be revealed soon. Get the team sorted, and I was just trying to concentrate on getting this finished in the Kias, and then yeah. working on the team again for the next season. Fair um, play, mate. It should be good fun. I've enjoyed the season. The battle, some of the battles have been epic. Some of the some of the racing's just been unreal. Pl proper pleasure to race in. We were saying that about the MX-5 as well. Like, it, it seems that no matter where you put this car, even on track, as unconventional for its Daytona, it does provide amazing racing. I mean, would, would you say it is mainly down to the car? Uh, yeah, I think it's, well, especially with it not having as much power, but also being rear-wheel drive makes it so much more fun. And it's a great little car, like I said, the stream brings some people back into the play, especially on tracks like this, where maybe they wouldn't normally have a chance. So it's great, like I said, it's a great equalising car. Good stuff. Well, before we uh, before we let you go, mate, obviously for the final time this season, uh, this season is there anyone you want to uh, give a shout out to? It? Yeah, the league admin, as always, always doing an excellent job sorting the points and the penalties out. You guys for always giving an excellent broadcast. And uh, for our sponsors as well that we'll have on the, the car, Youth Energy Drink, Racing Mentor, MotorsportDaysLive.com, Tom's Vehicle, vehicle Detailing, and uh, the pre or premature baby foundation cracking well it's been a pleasure as uh, as always to speak to you adam and we wish you all the best and of course the youth energy boys for the uh, the winter series and we'll keep our eye out for you and track your results from there right thank you it's been a great season cheers adam see you later my favorite scotsman there adam mcnally um tom we've got a uh, quite a good selection now in the interview waiting area um who would you like to bring in I think we'll bring Josh in, shall we? I'd like to talk to him about his uh, race two escapades. So, uh, hello, Josh. Um, I see you had a you had a brilliant evening this evening, apart from um, apart from race two. But um, how do you how did you sort of how did you feel after you know you had that incident where it was last co last corner for last time for the bus stop, sorry, and then you just ended up in the wall. So, talk us through what happened and then how you bounced back. Uh, race one, I felt like I was bullied quite a lot because obviously I'm with Result Clothing and that's an AM team, so I'm the pro driver, so they usually go for the reverse grids. So I'm on my own, and you know, like Momo and Cooper and Youth Energy are all in vocal, knowing exactly when to do it. As you saw, one lap, like, all four Momo cars went to the inside of me and got me perfect. So it was just so hard, and I thought I was racing fair. And the last two laps, it got, I think, a little bit personal between me and Momo because I don't get on with a few of them. But, like, I'll be all right about that. But um, So I felt like that didn't help. So I felt I got buoyed out the wave and had that issue before coming onto the banking as well. 
So I was like, I had to nail the bus stop, which carried a little bit too much speed, just nipped the grass at the wrong angle. Thought I caught the rear, but as the rear rotated around, it just clipped the wall and it decided to do a wall run. Yeah, we, we, we saw you there, but it was unfortunate for you. But in the next race, you bounced back. Um, and we said on the broadcast that you'd be downhearted after your incident. Um, so when you were coming off the bank and then the slipstream, did you did you know it was coming or did you not think that you were going to quite get there? To be honest, I knew how to do it because obviously last time the MX-5 was here, that exact thing happened to me. So I knew I had to play it smart and I just needed to get a win. Like, I needed to try anything. I had to use my head so much tonight against other teams. Obviously, being on my own most of the time at the front. Just had to use my head and it worked. I knew how much the tow was going to be worth, but I didn't. I needed to be on the inside for it to be extreme. So being on the outside, I would have lost a lot of momentum because I had to travel a lot further. So look, it was a bit of luck. Once I actually had some on my side after a, like a, such a torrid season. The amount of times I've said to the boys that result, I, like, I don't want to race. Like at Road, like Road America, should have won race one, but got unlucky with someone, and then after that, get caught up in every instant going. So, and then obviously, like tonight, having a few little mistakes here and there, like in race the last race, kind of messed up myself, but felt like I had to go for it. Was I was gonna get bullied out again. Uh, overall, I'm happy. I just managed to get a win ten the season for the team. It's, yeah, it's brilliant stuff, uh, Josh. Um, just one one thing we I do want to quickly talk about. We've seen you have this knack going into turn one um, that you seem to be late on the brakes. Um, just talk us through. We saw you in race two just go around the outside of three people. Do you? Is it just a case of positioning the car where you know they're going to be, or is it just balls to the wall, Danny Danny Ricardo, and just straight just straight around the outside? A bit of both. I know you can break late in turn one here anyway because the amount of laps I've done in GTE and stuff like that around here it's so easy to go in quite late and with the way turn one is there's a bit of a bump as you saw in race four it caught me out on the downshift which then flung my car left there was a bit of a crest in the track where the track falls away so what you do is you can travel a lot further you can break you want to make sure you're breaking in a straight line and it's fine broken a straight line all the time and managed to get the downshift on the bump where the track dips away so it rotates the car for you so you don't miss the corner lucky enough I've known that for quite a while so I've always been able to pull that move off around the outside so it's a little trait I know around this track that's, that's brilliant stuff mate uh, we know you've had not like, had the best of seasons but uh, just quickly before you let you go for the last time is there anyone that you'd like to give a shout yeah so you guys as always for the broadcasting it's always been great this season happy it's on the esports network so it gets a bit more attention um, result clothing uh, thank you for those boys obviously I wasn't even planning to do the entire season I didn't have the best season at all I said to them I felt bad that I should have done a lot better for them so I'm happy with a win for that and also um, we also asked for Mavano because I saw those boys were watching as well and congratulating the win so thank you to those boys for checking it out as well thanks very much sir Josh and we hope to see you next season yeah you too guys see you later Josh Thompson there Always happy to come in for an interview and have a chat. Um, someone I'd like to bring in next, actually, is our new AM Series champion, is Mr. Scott Malcolm. Scott, you've uh, you've won the AM Championship, mate. Massive congratulations. I've actually done it. <laughs> Can't even believe it. <laughs> well, it's been fantastic to watch you racing all season, mate. We've seen you putting the effort in in that uh, beautiful automatic Oak Hill car. Um, talking about tonight in general, though, how did you feel like tonight went? Um... I just knew I had to finish all four races, that's all I wanted to do. Um, I think the, the pressure was on Ben, but unfortunately he had uh, internet problems in the, the second race, which more or less that was it over. Uh, so I, I feel for Ben, because he put in the hell of a lot of effort and he's actually faster than me, I would say. I've got that. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant stuff, mate. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, you've got, well, as as, uh, as a very famous commentator once said, to finish first, first you have to finish. And at the end of the day, if that's all you needed to do, then fair play to you for doing it. It's not always the easiest in a frantic series like this. I mean, we've, we've, uh, we've seen many incidents over the course of the season, but are you, uh, are you looking to do the same in the winter series and try and uh, capitalise on the momentum then? 
Aye, I'm going to try and do the full the full year this time. I missed uh, the first season, or started in the, the second one. Um, it just it took me about a season and a half to get the hang of it. Uh, so, fingers crossed, if I could put in performances like that, that I've put in this season, the full year, then who knows. Well, we hope to see you take it in the Winter Series, mate. We'll uh, we'll be vying for you to win it. And before we let you uh, let you go tonight, is there anyone you want to give a quick shout out to? Obviously, the usual lot. You guys for putting on good broadcast. Um, I just want to say the old mate got killed, guys. It's been an absolute privilege and a pleasure to be part of that team over the years. Um, I just don't know what else to say about it, but uh, it's uh, time to move on. Fair play, mate. Well, we uh, we enjoyed watching it, mate, and obviously our extended congratulations to you. So hopefully we will uh, see you getting more good results in the Winter Series as well. Nice one. Uh, cheers, guys. Cheers. Scott Markham there. New AM champion for the uh, Autumn Series, of course. Just a quick shout-out as well. David Ayres, I think, has won the AM Championship for the year. So brilliant result for him. No pun intended, but it is for result clothing. Um, probably time for just one more, I'd say, Tom. Um, there's one very important person that is in that interview waiting area, and we'll bring him in just for you. It's the uh, overall annual champion, Mr. Steve Heffer. So take it away, son. Hello, Steve. Uh, great to chat to you, and uh, very congratulations on your overall uh, championship win. You must be absolutely delighted. Yeah. Good evening, guys. Yeah. Made up. Made up. It's been a long. It's been a long time coming. Uh, usually something happens at the end of the season that just uh, screws things up but no, just, just hung on by a fraction this year it's been, it's been great watching you all year mate um, it's sad to see the Momo team go but um, yeah you must uh, you've, had, you've, you've had some great times with those guys so um, I'm sure you're very sad to see them go yourself yeah it is it's the end of an era it's really, really sad in a way but we've got something else Brewing, so we'll be back but as a team we are like so strong we put a lot of effort in a lot of practice and we push each other you know so yeah it's up yeah it's, it's you've, you've been great to watch, watch you and the team um just quickly on the race we saw in i believe it was the last race actually you and uh, josh thompson it might have been race three you came into turn one and there was a bit of an incident can you just talk us through that quickly yeah i've not seen it back myself yet um but yeah, I think we, we just touched and it sent me into a spin. I don't know if I could have recovered. And then Brian just clipped me on the way past, so sort of finished me off. But uh, yeah, one of those things, it was always going to be close. I was, I've got like a 2.7 gap at one point, but I knew there was no way. I mean, they were just drafting off each other and there was no way I could keep that up. So I was waiting for it. But yeah, it was, a, it was going to be an interesting last lap. So I'm really sorry that, uh, that that happened, to be honest. Uh, nothing to be sorry for, mate. It's been brilliant watching you all season. Uh, before we let you go for the final time, you can go and enjoy your championship with a beer or a glass of champagne. Is there anyone you'd like to give a shout out? Just all the more and more guys, the team. Um, it's, it's just been epic racing with them, to be honest. And, and everybody involved, you guys, and everybody we race with, all the, all the regulars. We've had a few new guys spicing things up towards the end of the season, but it's really good racing against uh, the same people week in week out you know when you get next to somebody you know that they're, they're on the same wavelength as you kind of thing and you, you can go really close together so just thanks to everybody there really. brilliant stuff steve heffage there your overall season champion well done mate cheers guys Awesome to see Steve take that win. It must be absolutely fantastic. It is obviously a very, uh, very difficult thing to win. It's a whole year round. Obviously, as I mentioned before, it's the four mini seasons. We've still got the winter season to go, and Steve's already won the annual championship, which is just shows his true pace. Uh, it's been fantastic to watch tonight, and we hope that you've enjoyed it on the iRacing Esports Network. Just quickly from you, Alex, any thoughts on the, uh, the evening overall from your perspective? Just a, just a great night. Um, racing, really. Sorry, watching the one. To Steve at the very end of that one as well. So, but uh, yeah, now fantastic meeting, fantastic season. To be fair, you know, it was good to switch over halfway through to Esports Network as well. As far as I know, I believe the league's going to apply for next season as well to be on there. So, 
um, yeah, it should be good. Obviously, the team's working hard to um, make sure they can uh, sort of adhere to the uh, the terms and conditions. So I'm just really stoked and looking forward to the winter series and what's coming on. You know, if it's going to be anything like we had. I mean, this series was started off this year as kind of just sort of a bit of a fun thing, you know, and it, it really has grown and grown and grown and grown. And uh, I remember the, the first Tuesday night race that we had probably 15 cars, you know, and we're constantly nipping around that sort of high thirties, low forties every um, every week now, which is uh, which is great. And um, you know, people really embrace what it is out there. You know, it's fun, far for fun, fast. You know, hot action pace races. You know, that's what it is. You just don't get it in every any other league anywhere else because they're all so so worried about obviously. Oh yeah, do, you know, don't take anyone out, all that kind of stuff, and. Uh, you know, the series kind of embraces good racing, good, hard, aggressive racing. And, uh, yeah, as long as you go into the series with your eyes wide open, that is exactly what you're going to get. It really is. And at the end of the day, it's been fantastic to watch. It's been fantastic to broadcast with you boys as well. So from me, from Tom and from Alex, it's been a pleasure being, uh, being here for you and doing this for you. Thanks very much for joining us. And we will catch you on the iRacing Esports Network, hopefully, for the BSR MX5 Winter Series. Have a great night. Thanks very much. presentation of the iRacing Esports Network.